all my people, they got a sore. I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore. Just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's got to be real big. I got to make it just for my kids and for their kids. Just kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, as soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job, that's real big. Satan trying a little. My God, is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars is real big. I got to do it big. The only way that I can live. And I promise I'm trying to Before you count me out, homie, let me remind you They was blocking the shine, now I think it's my time to Careful them dollar signs, like lights, they'll blind you Let me rewind to Back when I was broke and I couldn't acquire two cents And now I got two rents They was sleeping on me, homie, must have got too big Call my phone, I be like, who this? Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new Smell like can too I'm fresh forever like canned food Try and tell me what I can't do I wanna see the world, my vision on sham mood I mean I got goals that's real big Foes that's real big Your offer too little, sorry, my soul is real big Coming into the ring with blows that's real big I gotta do it big, that's the only way I can live
mission complete.
string together a lot of uh, semi-true combos against Vibes, and even though Vibes was doing the same thing, it ultimately was the projectiles at the end of the day for Pineapple that won the day and stocked up the percentage on that last stock. Yeah, I, I mean, credit where credit's due for, uh, to Pineapple throughout that set to clean up that stock, and like you said, the projectile usage was really clean, and uh, I mean, there were some moments where there was a, there were some iffy choices, uh, like attempting the down air uh, against that up air five times in a row. But you know, if it if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Got him back down to stage eventually. I do think also there was a little bit of in the case of that matchup in particular. Uh, vibes I felt like, especially early on in that match, felt like he was kind of playing with house money. You know, going for those big, heavy forward smash reads and up smash reads, uh, trying to catch those those landings that we were talking about early, but also just being aggressive all of the time. When you're playing with that lead, right, just seeing how far can you go with it. And it will take a stock, but the fact that they didn't quite get that second one is a, a potential huge turning point in this match if the second player doesn't get the job done. Yeah, and that is a big if right there. However, I'm feeling pretty confident right here in Pineapple holding their own. I'm not sure, uh, even though I got to see the main Fisher roster the other day in CECC East, I'm not entirely sure we're going to see a lot of them debuting. I believe B uh, Blue from the main roster is here tonight, uh, captaining the white roster. However, however... I don't know everyone who is going to be playing with Fisher College, so I'm curious to see who this is arriving on deck. Kurakura is the tag. It's gonna be hmm. uh, interesting. Oh. It's gonna be interesting to see. Uh, one of the one of the things that I'm always interested to see here, especially in the 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 this format, is that because there's only three players per crew battle, there's always that decision making that goes through of uh, you know, which players do we send in when? Because again, this is the it's a best of three crew battle format. So even if you lose the first crew, crew battle, you can still potentially win the next two. And you've got a lot of depth uh, in both of these rosters to kind of play around with uh, to see where they end up at. Yes, we do. And I'm curious to see where that depth takes us. I mean, we've already seen a lot of uh, we, we got to see the Fox, the Piranha Plant, and the Bowser Jr. That's not exactly the well standard layout a lot of teams bring to the table and well if they continue that pattern of showing off showing up i'm very excited to see what else could happen as well we're trying to see who is coming in next uh peeking in on the comms between them we're going to be going to small battlefield and it is going to be jd on this ganon against pineapple on here now, the signature thing I've seen from a lot of Fisher College is the fast pace that they play at. If they're able to keep that up, I'm excited to see it. We, as we stated on paper, this is a terrible match rate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be honest, I'm, I'm excited. I have not seen a Ganondorf in a, in a minute here. And uh, Ganon's one of those, you know, you were talking about how Fox is a, is a glass cannon. Ganon, I feel like, is almost the same, but for all the opposite reasons. It just every single hit feels like you're getting smashed by a truck but you also have struggles like this where getting back to stage is just a nightmare against characters like bowser jr already at 97 but the get up attack will get jd back to stage yes it will but now you've got to deal with those ledge trapping up parry but the second baton swing will be enough to clean out that stock from jd pineapple with the awareness to not give up after that first parry came out at this moment, JD is looking for another ledge trap. They had a good idea in the first time, but they may be a little deterred now. Has to give up all the stage to those projectiles. Ganon just doesn't have a way to contend with them. Yeah, really the difficulty, but once they get in, they can do a lot. You're seeing a lot of just up smash, forward smash, and, and such from the side of JD. Because these heavies, they are just known for taking stocks is right there. Up smash takes it. Two to one lead here for JD. Again, these are both teams' second players, so whoever goes down will have the lead entering that third match, so 
potentially a huge stock taken. Jab's not going to find a way to take that stock. Up B, not going to do the trick either. Up tilts, finding some damage, but good parry there into the down tilt, sneaking by those hitboxes as JD to get, a, get out of the corner. They are as... Ooh, with that drill, they're opened up. Scary situation at ledge. Pineapple goes for the ledge trap, but JD goes all up above everything, but they get knocked up above themselves. Now JD is forced to get off of the ledge. I don't even know what hitbox that was. I've never seen that in, on Ganon's Uppy in my life, but I'm not sure Pineapple has either. JD keeps trying to tech chase with that good awareness to stay away from the cannonball. An opportunity right there. Is the up air enough? Yes, it is. JD is able to finish off Pineapple's second stock. And with a two stock, Fisher College remains in the lead. Uh, the up air taking it on the platform. Yeah, I don't know what that up B hitbox was either. That was a crazy reach from JD, but still able to get him back to stage and able to take the lead here. Two stocks still on their second player here for the side of Fisher College. And, you know, like we said, going into this, I mean, Ganon is a, a scary character just for the sole reason that he can output so much damage and take stocks. And Pineapple there, only able to take one, that's a pretty significant stock count now, five to three with one player left. Who do you send in if you're on the uh, side of SUNY Canton here? Well, we still do have the captain in the back pocket, and that would be Waka, who does play Lucina and I believe Diddy Kong. Both characters, I believe, have a very good matchup against the Ganondorf. However, Ganon was, uh, JD was playing very clean on that Ganon and is very threatening when all of a sudden the Ganon is picking all the right options. Like, for me, playing Ganondorf is a little bit like playing Dark Souls. Like, you're a little slow, you're a little clunky, you're sluggish, you've got to use your rolls, you've got to use every little bit of intang intangibility the game gives you because that's all the game is afforded to you. You've got to dodge and dodge and dodge, wait for your opening, and then when you get that opening, you have to hit hard. That is what we saw JD doing for the most part. Not necessarily hitting every tech chase, um, especially they were very liberal with that up smash, which while it is a good coverall, uh, we did see Bowser Jr. rolling out of that range at times. However, they still won the game with only take, dropping one stock, demonstrating that they had the uh, resolve to hold on to a stock at above 100%. So if we see more of that coming in, JD could be taking some serious hits off of whoever is coming in next from SUNY Canton. <laughs> and the uh, the other thing too, right? You talked about the ability to survive at, at high percents on a character like Ganondorf. That is so vital because now you tack on the amount of damage that that, char that character can do normally, plus you add the rage on top of it. Suddenly you need less interactions to kill your opponent than with a character like Ganondorf who can output so much damage if they're getting the correct openings, if they're guessing correctly. And you saw JD guessing correctly more often than not. So a scary character to go against, but one that is uh, exploitable if you can get them once again in disadvantage. But we'll have to see uh, if this final player for the side of Fisher, uh, or for the final player for the side of SUNY Canton can do that. If it is indeed Waka coming in with the most likely Lucina. I believe we saw Waka play Lucina last time. That's more of their tried and true. It's still very dangerous. It reminds me, <laughs> maybe it's the maybe it's the fact that I played Melee for so long, but Captain Falcon versus Marth, right? Where if you just mm -hmm. get above them, they, you know, there, there's, it's so dangerous when that one opening comes through. Because uh, as a sortie, you're, you're, Game plan's pretty linear, right? I'm just gonna box them out. I'm just gonna use my disjoint. Just keep them away and just make sure they don't find that one opening. And then they get the one opening and you go, oh no, here we go. <laughs> but we'll have to see if mm -hmm. that is uh, indeed the case. As I believe picks and bans for stages are coming through at the moment. Uh, we'll get those underway shortly, but still five to three in terms of stock count and two stocks to take from a Ganondorf. Is there a stage that you're looking towards to kind of say, this is not a good stage for Ganon, this is where I should take him to try and take those two stocks, two, excuse me, two stocks off the board quickly? Well, maybe not necessarily quickly, but if you really want to exploit what makes Ganondorf a 
less than average character, um, then you want to go to a big stage. Both Diddy Kong and Lucina, and this is just Waka's characters, there are a whole plethora of players who could be coming in, but either way, most characters in the game are faster on the ground and in the air than Ganondorf, so taking them to a big stage means that you get to choose where and when your engagements occur. Now, I would slightly hesitate to go to, the, to town and city simply because of how small the blast zones are. One mistake at like 40%, you could just be dead. I would think Kalos could be a very uh, sustainable option. No platforms to get tech chased on. Uh, I mean, there are the platforms on the side, but it, it's not really that much of an issue. Uh, and you can choose exactly when and where you fight. Now, between Lucina and Diddy Kong, I know you talked about the Lucina, and I agree on paper. Um, however, however, <laughs> in practice, I feel like Lucina just doesn't have the ability to make the other person not play the game, at least not at a more like mid-high level like we're seeing now. Diddy Kong, on the other hand, can just throw that down the banana, Threaten monkey kick, and Ganon doesn't really have options. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, just I don't let him play. I I, I do agree. I, I've seen I've seen Diddy Kong versus uh, versus Ganondorf before, and it does not look fun for the Ganondorf to to attempt to play out. That banana can just stuff out basically everything Ganon wants to do. He just has to to catch the banana uh, and. And then things get even scarier, but you know that, that's a whole other side of the story, and that's a, only if the matchup comes through. But we'll have to see as players are getting ready now. We mm -hmm. see the stage bands have been selected. Uh, Smashville, Smashville off the board, Battlefield and Yoshi's off the board, Town and City being selected. Uh, mm -hmm. So and it's gonna be Top Dog coming in. It is Top Dog. So Top Dog. <laughs> On the Samus oh. here, locking in. I don't think we've seen Top Dog Samus uh, at least through the first uh, two or three weeks here. So this will be this will be fun to watch. Top Dog throwing a wild card on the table. It is going to be the Samus. I think objectively this is a very good situation. If you just three, down be at ledge, two, one, there is not a go. single thing Ganon can do about it. Uh, if you play this correctly. There is not a single thing you can do. What I do want to see is not relying too much on just the projectiles. I want to be seeing the Zares. I want to be seeing some tricky movement in the air. Do not let yourself become easy food for the beast. Because otherwise, this could be going pretty bad. But the disjoints are coming out initially. However, now we see JD on top of Top Dog. Scary moment there. 36% though for Top Dog. Not too much off the back of it, but... We'll have to see here. Trying to play the spacing game, but the dash attack leaves an opening for JD. Forward air does not connect, and though JD Ooh. is low on his shield at center stage, he does have stage control, but not too much fear to the side of Samus as those projectiles come through. But oh my goodness, JD finding the openings right now. Not going to attempt to challenge that up B back to stage. The back throw will get uh, Ganondorf off stage for the moment. There are those down Bs you were talking about, and Top Dog pressuring with the dash attack, but they'll just eat the, the down before it, and the forward air connects on the roll back, so Top Dog down to two stocks here. Top Dog had the right idea, was holding the line, but they're not able to get in position fast enough to cover the roll. JD is just recovering too fast. Top Dog has to be a little quicker with it if they want to catch JD on the recovery, because right now it is JD slowly evening this game up. We could be going to the second round already just off the back of this Ganondorf soy. Be very careful. Mm -hmm. yeah, so one of the things that I, I saw there, you see Top Dog throwing out some options is, oh my, the back air comes through and JD's got some good reads too, but the spacing game that Top Dog wants to play is not working. It's working to JD's favor. He's able to sneak underneath a couple of these forward airs with things like Nair that just continue to rack up the damage. And JD looks like he's got a very good read on this matchup. Yes, he does. 
right now. Top Dog is sweating a little bit. We saw a very clean, consistent gameplay from Top Dog in the beginning, but now look, just down smashes, up tilts in place, not willing to go anywhere within JD's threat range, which is the right idea, but it might be for the wrong reasons. It might be complete fear, not out of a, uh, well, playing the tier list, but now it feels like Top Dog is stabilizing a little bit. Is it too little too late though? Because JD has them at ledge and Top Dog get back, is able to get a grab. What can we get from that, Top Dog? Not too much. He's got stage positioning at the moment, but we'll have to see here. Getting back to stage, that's a good down air into neutral air. That's a surprisingly strong move. Went for the edge guard, but he's going to get the footstool off the back of it. So down goes JD onto their last stock. But oh my, wanted the roll read and nearly had it. The shields are so low at the moment. Forward air is not going to connect. But it's up to this last stock here for Top Dog. They've got to find a way back on the stage. They have feedback back here. Down tilt, not going to land. 98%. And the forward air beats out the Zare. And Top Dog goes down. JD cleans it up for Fisher. Very nice stuff from JD in the end right there. You saw Top Dog playing that matchup to on that last stock exactly as you're supposed to. Looping all the way around the stage. Uh, I mean, Scooby-Doo chase music being played <laughs> over the entirety of that. We just see round and round in circles they go. Top Dog goes one way, JD follows. Top Dog goes right over, JD follows. And it kept happening like that over and over and over. And Top Dog was winning. But the issue is, even when you are doing the exact optimal thing, if you're doing that same optimal thing again and again and again and again and again, JD is inevitably going to catch on, even with their limited movement options, and that's exactly what happened at the end. Yeah, JD, you saw right, exactly what you said. Just as that matchup went on, JD got better and better at reading the movements of Top Dog throughout that set. So set number one, again, going to Fisher College. They take it, I believe that was a four stock total victory there at the end. So mm -hmm. solidly done uh, for the side of Fisher College and they get ready for set number two. And honestly, it feels like if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The way that their, their first two players played between uh, JD and Vibes, uh, those two looked very solid on the Ganon and the, and the Fox. So We'll have to see what adaptations uh, SUNY Canton can bring to the table here in the second set. And speaking of adaptations, I do think Ganon is a very good crew battle character because when you play Ganon in a best of three or best of five set, sometimes you just get rocked game one. It happens. You're not ready to give that much respect. Game two comes around. All of a sudden you're like, OK, I'm not letting you play the game as <laughs> I recommended. And that's what they were doing at the end. I expect if we see JD again against the same people, uh, if we see JD against Pineapple or against Top Dog, it is going to be this, the same song and dance as we saw in that last stock. If JD is going to have a lot of trouble getting in, because this time they are alert and aware and ready to counter this Ganon as opposed to last time. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. I always think heavies in general are very interesting to watch in crew battles because they're so polarizing. On one hand, in theory, you should be able to deal with the bigger, heavier characters very quickly, especially if you've got uh, a lot of those, you know, quick, fast, light combo characters uh, on your on your roster. But on the other hand, you slip up on those combos, and now the damage that they output and the, the number of stocks they can take just suddenly gets increased. It feels like the heavies are just meant for taking stocks. And in a crew battle format where every single stock matters and you can kind of divvy it up three a piece, if you're trying to just take one and equalize, those heavies suddenly feel like they become a whole lot more valuable. And to have JD who feels very proficient on this Ganondorf is a very good sign for the side of Fisher College. Yes, it is, Soy. I, overall, <laughs> Fisher College is demonstrating the benefit of bringing on these very high-level players. Because, I mean, <laughs> Fisher College has some arguable uh, Sonics, an arguable top 10 player, a lot of arguable top 50 players. They're not playing tonight. However, <laughs> you ever heard of trickle-down economics? Arguable if it works in real life. <laughs> but it uh, definitely works in terms of distributing the skill amongst a team because 
you'll bring on these really high level players and then you will bring on some other players who may not be quite there but they have potential and they go into the practice room and they get beat and they get beat down again and again and again and they get better and better and they still get beat sure but then they come out of that little uh, hyperbolic time chamber and all of a sudden they are leveled up beyond their wildest expectations going against people who they would have struggled against before and they're putting on shows like we just saw from fisher college now that was not unwinnable suny canton can certainly bring that back but i just wanted to harp on how that was a testament to what fisher college brings to the table in bringing on so many good players yeah absolutely it comes down to experience right when you've got the veteran experience that uh, a player like Sonics has and a play and the rest of that that Fisher College uh, roster has, it, it just it spreads like wildfire, right? If you've got that vast experience, it's going to help out so much putting yourself in those different scenarios, learning from the from the veterans of the scene, it can really help the depth of the roster. And that's what you're seeing from Fisher College. It's why they're they're such a good program. They're so good at not only you know finding talent, but developing the talent off the off of the back of it. So SUNY Canton, we knew coming into this that they had a tall task ahead of them, but it certainly feels doable. There were moments through that set, glimpses where you saw, okay, they can take stocks. They can hang around and be relatively even in the, you know, three for three, in the three for two. But it's the matter of getting the lead, I think, is the first key here, right? They've got to find an advantage first because the second you're on the back foot, you're playing the counter pick game. You're playing the can I stall them out type of style. Can I find a, a, an opening to get back to even? I want to see if uh, in the second set, SUNY, can, uh, SUNY Canton can find those advantages, can find those windows to take the lead for themselves. And that, and that forces the opposite situation of putting the pressure on Fisher College to make a comeback, to make a play, to make the difference in the second set. And I do believe they have the tools to do just that. A strong combo-based uh, player like Pineapple is the answer to a player like Vibes. A zoner, a zoner who is proficient in leading a, leading a Ganon around like a carrot on the stick, well, that is exactly what you need to deal with someone like JD. The answer is, can you put those tools in at the right time? And can you make sure those tools are sharpened and ready for the task at hand? That's what I'm looking for here. Because I think there may be just... I, I don't think the skill difference is insurmountable. I don't think the experience difference is insurmountable. But you can't always play at your peak in a tournament setting when there's stress on the line. And we are online as well. So I'm looking to see if they can bring themselves up, if SUNY Canton can bring themselves up to that peak and show us maybe not necessarily an outright win, but better than what we saw last time. I've got high hopes for them in the rest of this season. Yeah, absolutely the case. As SUNY Canton, I believe they're 1-1 one one on the year as well. Again, tough opening against your your basically college dorm mates in the, in the opening round uh, of SUNY Canton A versus SUNY <laughs> Canton B. So... A, a matchup where they knew each other very well going into it. And then week two, uh, uh, another tough matchup that they were able to, I believe, claw out. And now we get to see the Min Min pick here. And this is what you're talking about with the possible advantages. Min Min versus Ganondorf. That sounds rough for JD. I would have to agree with you right there, Soy. Complete control over the ground game. The platforms are where this battle will be waged. Can JD find ways to slowly walk towards Curls without Curls eventually battering them back? On PS2, where you've got this big old no man's land in the middle, that is going to be quite difficult, but JD is going to try their best. And as we saw in the last game, their best is still pretty good. Curls had a very strong performance last time they were on stream too with this Min Min. They were taking out some fast fallers. But this is a different kind of beast as JD with the down air spike on curls right off the bat. What an opening from Fisher College's JD. On a tether recovery too, are you kidding me curls? Or JD as right now curls is going for this ledge trap but a very high recovery into a fastball right there gets JD back to ledge. But I'm not sure if they can keep this stock alive forever. It might just be done and dusted as that will be JD going down demonstrating why this matchup is so difficult. Good down air into the nair and now 
74 to 100. Ooh, but the grab whiffed there from Curls, and this could be an opening again. That timing, and yeah, I think Curls now has kind of the fear of God in them after that that down air spike. They're thinking, I've got to snap to ledge so quick because JD now is threatening that timing. They know it well, and they're going to be looking for that opening time and time again as the oh. up smash catches the jump, and it's 2-1 to one JD's lead. Yep. Right now, JD is very good at taking these calculated risks that aren't putting them in too much disadvantage. But right now, they're stuck above the Min Min and thrown off stage. This could just be the stock. But Curl's not fast enough. Immediately follows up with the grab, though. Air dodges through, and Curl's overextends. Now it's them on ledge. We've seen JD in these situations before. Goes for the double spike, but it does not connect, Soy. So close. That window was there and JD just barely not able to get the down air out in time but now JD's along the ledge can't switch arms quite yet to get that edge guard but now we get another grab back throw not going to do it quite yet covered high but no dice there 112 on JD in the up smash doesn't find the mark this is a lot of damage up there low recovery trying to catch the tether trying to beat them to the ledge as well but they can't track him down as the roll to stage gets beat out there and there's another stock off the board of JD, 75% now on Curls, but they can work their way back into this. They've got stage control. Yeah, right now, this is looking very good as Curls is boxing out JD, but they're not ready for the surprise. Wizard's foot, oh, goes for another foot right there. That episode that led twice, but it's not gonna find any perch right now. Down with Ford Air, an opportunity for a finish right there. This could be an edge trap into death. Goes for a bait, but gets back thrown instead. Can Curls find the finisher right here? Oh, the first catch. I think they the just did, one? Soy. Oh, what a catch from Curls there. That was so clutch as JD falls in the first set. It's Curls giving Suni Kant in the lead. And this is exactly what you were hyping up. That's a lead for SUNY Canton. Fisher College has got to find a way to dig deep to finish off this uh, Min Min. Uh, or, sorry, Fisher has to dig deep to finish off this Min Min because Pearls has demonstrated that they are quite an issue. Yeah, Min Min is, a, is a, another interesting character to kind of look at because on one hand, they can control the, the stage so well, but that disadvantage as JD uh, so, so uh, showed in that first stock, it can be a, a bit threatening at times, it can be a bit dangerous. So uh, interesting to see how uh, this set will play out. You got one stock of Min Min to deal with to try and get back to even. Do you go with Vibes for the Fox matchup or do you look to the rest of the depth of this roster to try and clean up this Min Min stock? Hmm. Interesting call. I feel like Vibes is a scary one because the rushdown does do good against Min Min. However, <laughs> <laughs> we saw how Curls is eager to capitalize on one missed offstage interaction. And while Fox has more options to vary, may not always be the case. This looks like it's going to be Sockum 16 coming in. I saw them on the roster. I've never seen Sockham 16 before, and I'm excited to see what they bring to the table to finish off curls. Yeah, and an interesting spot to put them in too, right? Because if we haven't seen them before, this will be their first time on stream uh, making an appearance. Knowing they're going up against the Min Min though, uh, should certainly help them and give them some, uh, some comfort level of knowing what they're getting into. Uh, looks like I believe it's Small Battlefield is the pick. We get to see the character here, and it is the Lucas going into the Min Min with one stock here for Sockham 16. So, Small Battlefield, the site, and we'll wait for Curls to get rid of those two stocks. But the Lucas matchup, I am not familiar with how this one plays out typically. Me neither. I would assume that the offstage situation is not amazing, but Lucas does have the range to recover outside of those hitboxes. Now, Lucas does have a very tricky ground game. However, if you're not able to box Lucas out, if you're not able to keep Lucas from getting on top of you, he does have a serious combo game, and that is detrimental to Min Min thrown off stage right there. And then you can interrupt the recovery with that tail, and that's going to be it. A, well, 
Rock'em Sock'em rocking right there from Sock'em 16 as Curls is taken out in an instant. Did Sock'em 16 only take 10% in that in that stock? I think they only got hit once <laughs> throughout that, that one yep. stock. That was uh, interesting to see. So, and now thinking about it more, the Lucas pick I actually really like into, into Min Min, right? Not only because of the reasons you mentioned, for you know, for example, the being out of range of the recovery, but also the tricky ground game, right? Min Min's, again, the arms are mostly pretty linear in how they how they attack. And if Lucas is floaty enough to be outside of those lines a lot and still threaten from a distance with things like the PK Fire, like the, the PK Thunder, it can make the, it, I mean, PK Thunder a little slow, but the distance game that Lucas can play is still kind of in that threat range for Min Min. Uh, yeah, and what a threat range <laughs> it was. Uh, Hypothetically, I mean, we saw how much uh, stage curls could con control in the match against JD. They never really got the arms out when they were on stage. Every single time they uh, tried to, they were stuffed out in an instant by a PK fire, by a neutral air, by a forward tilt, by a down tilt. Either doesn't matter what it was. Consistently, they were getting caught by these options, and then. That tail whip at the end, that is the name of the technique where you send out the PK Thunder and just sort of nudge people with it, nudge them away from stage instead of just hitting them up. Uh, it's more of a nest thing, but Lucas, I think, has a more efficient version of it. Uh, almost like a lightning loop, you're able to uh, just gently push them away from stage instead of knocking them up and away from it, as Lucina is going to be the answer right here. Six stocks to six stocks between Fisher College and SUNY Canton. And Lucas into sorties. I feel like I've seen this matchup before. Typically, sorties, I believe, do well into the into the the Earthbound characters. But I mean, Lucas, the combos can be so dangerous, and Sockham should they can deal with stocks pretty quickly. We'll have to see how they do against Waka here in the second battle between these two. Again, like you said, full, fully even stock counts, two players apiece. So the turning point of set number two is here. Ooh, a nice little Z can uh, double cancel Zare off of ledge as Waka is showing that they have the ability to burst through Lucina's zoning range and don't let it fool you. Lucina is a zoner in the way that she keeps you away from her in her sword, but it's not as consistent as other characters. These drift back aerials from Waka have been so good. Um, flying backwards with these PK Thunders. I don't, I, I feel hesitant to call out if that's a slingshot or not because, you know, that little funny little demonstration. But either way, the way that Waka is keeping, or Sockham is keeping themselves safe while throwing out these projectiles is really messing up Waka's neutral as they do get caught by the PK freeze at ledge. That was so good to, to recognize the way that Waka was moving. They, they were drifting back to stage that it was still unsure whether they could air dodge back or whether they were going to dip down and use that up B and either way the timing would have worked out the way Sakam covered it but look at this there's the up tilt now from Waka as they're looking for a way to get the stock count back to even this is a grab but up throw should not quite do it yet 138 now on Sakam forward tilt not going to kill quite yet either but the up B got the wrong angle, couldn't go in, went down instead. So stocks are back to even and percents. Although Walk is at a deficit, it can be made up very quickly here. Yeah, the juggles are where I feel like Waka has found and will continue to find most of their damage. Lucas seems like an oppressive character up until you hit Lucas, and then you realize, oh, Lucas has no tools to escape this advantage. So if Waka is able to get Sockham into a juggle situation and hold them there, that could just be juggle to death. However, Sockham is being so elusive, I don't see that happening that much. So... <laughs> yeah, no, very... Yeah, very elusive. Oh my god, that that was a near read on a forward smash from the side of Sockham 16 in Fisher College, but ooh, running up, threatening possibly a forward air. The run up forward tilt's also very dangerous, but not going to be able to get those off either. There's that upbeat, knocking Lucina away again, and Waka will find a way back to stage, can't get the grab. There's the down tilt. 
into a down smash. Don't see that move all too often. It won't take the stock quite yet, but there's a Zare. Dash attack does not find the mark, and this is, this is another huge point. Both are above 100%. Both are at those rage percents, kill percents. Can they find a way to take this stock and hold on to their own? Well, it's Sockum who gets the grab, and the up throw eliminates Waka, and Waka is now down up to their last stock. And now Waka feeling the pressure a little bit, and I feel for them. Uh, suffering from a little bit of Lucinitis. Like, when you miss those key kill confirms, when you get the down tilt down smash and it doesn't kill, then all of a sudden you have to be like, so I just have to dance and blade or back air or something like that. But it can get in your head. You don't have those super, super safe options as the disadvantage can start to snowball 65% they do get the stock Waka has an opportunity here but Sockum is continuing to keep up the pressure 89% the difference right now Sockum untouched on this third stock until that forward air good grab to follow up but the mash out is good as well the nair doesn't find it went for the down air early spike attempt but no dice 89% still on Waka is they're able to keep Sockum away for now, but there's a grab back throw. This is a dangerous spot. Neutral be used and it won't find its mark. There's another grab back throw. Keeping Waka or keeping uh, Sockum, excuse me, off stage. Ooh, but there's a strong hit of forward tilt. Another low recovery. The up interrupts it, but the up Ooh. trades as well with Sockum on stage. Forward air and the strong sweet spot hits and down goes Waka. Sockum 16 stays alive. Beautiful jump call out right there at the end of the game. I was really feeling for Waka. They were getting a lead. They were getting an edge. They were finding ways to claw themselves back into it. But at the end of the, at the end of the day, so it just took them too long to kill at times. They didn't really manage to hit any edge guards against Lucas. A lot of respect for Lucas's recovery. Um, and that was often because uh, we saw them going for a lot of tether recoveries. Uh, uh, Sockham didn't leave themselves exposed all too much. However, even if that wasn't one of the main factors, we still ended up seeing Sockham live to ludicrous percents. I mean, it was above 150, 130, 150 every single time. Lucina's, one of her main kill confirms, outside of just ledge trapping you to death, is down tilt, down smash. We saw it exactly once in center stage, and that was all we ended up seeing from it. Was that a testament to how Ariel Sockham was playing? Yes, but finding ways to secure those kills, definitely, uh, especially against more elusive, tiny characters, that's what I'm hoping to see in the future from Waka. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to see. Uh, credit where credit's due to Sockham, though. Uh, I mean, the ability to, like you said, kind of maneuver around the game plan that Waka brought to the table and stay alive for so long, not give themselves, not put themselves in the situation uh, to be kill confirmed, uh, especially on things like you said, the down tilt, down smash. Uh, Sakam again, playing very well. I mean, just kind of taking what's given to them and seeing where they can go with it. You take the one stock off the Min Min right off the bat, then here you get matched up with something that seems a little rougher in the Lucina and still able to survive, able to take some stocks. So really well done, already four off the table and you forced SUNY Canton to their last player here with one stock still remaining. Yeah, and just one stock from Sockham might just seal the deal. They're gonna need to be very clutch, very careful right here, not play around at all against this Lucas. The issue is who is going to come in with the Lucas experience? Who is going to? It looks like it's going to be Squid coming in at the end of the day. Now, Squid, I do know, uh, rocks the Donkey Kong and the Falco. I can't say for certain which I would rather see right now. Uh, while the Falco is very good, I know there are a lot of Falcos on the, on the side of Fisher College. Uh, Falco is a very good character, a character that can invalidate other characters, which I do feel like is probably the play however if your dk can also invalidate them if your punish game is that good then you might want to rock with it <laughs> yeah i i saw last time i saw squid on stream they rocked the dk now they only needed to take two stocks in order to secure the set last time and 
the DK looked clean, right? All the classic DK combos uh, were, they were landing and they were landing hard. So the DK, it, it almost goes back to what I was talking about earlier, where if sometimes all you need to get things back to even or to keep things under control is a stock, maybe the DK is the play. That being said, DK into Lucas and then a counter pick, that in itself sounds a little rough. So the Falco likely the play here, but if what you say is is you know true of the kind of Falco experience that Fisher College has, maybe the Falco is something that they're going to shy away from. So it'll be curious to see what uh, Squid picks up here. It, it, it'll be interesting to see. But uh, I mean, it, it could go either way. And again, this is uh, SUNY Canton's kind of last leg here if squid does not find a way to take the next four stocks one off of uh sock of 16 and three off of the next player they will go oh and two on the day and the win will go to fisher college so a very important decision to be made here for the side of suny canton and squid yeah i'll be honest i believe you I believe the hype around the Donkey Kong. I believe in the Ding Dongs. I believe in the Edge Traps. I believe in the mix-ups at Ledge. Sometimes you gotta risk it. And Falco, we haven't seen any super explosive combo games on the side of Fisher. I do know Blue is in the back pocket. I do know we also have... Uh, we saw... Who was that earlier? Um, Vibes on the Fox could definitely do a lot of work, but Vibes also sometimes struggled to get those kills. In the end, I'm not sure. I, I feel like the DK could definitely be... Well, you got to rock with the comfort pick. At the end of the day, your back is as close to the wall as it possibly could be. I'm curious to see. And it is going to be the DK coming out. Don't go with the meta. <laughs> <laughs> I love the pick. I like what you said. Sometimes you gotta take risks. Uh, if you don't take the risk, you may not end up with the victory. And the DK is the risk here, as they're gonna need to take at least a stock here from Sockham. The question is, can they take it without Sockham drawing any more blood? As one stock from Sockham 16 versus Squid on the DK on small battlefield. And we'll see what happens next. Back airs gonna be that big neutral tool that Squid will use time and time again. DK certainly has the ability to take stocks quickly, but I imagine Sockham 16 gonna play very safe here and not allow for those windows to come very quickly. Maximum away up to the top ding dong 90 percent already and even though sakam is stacked on some percent they're struggling to find any substantial moves there we go there's an option air dodges through the pk freeze here's another one forced it and that is the stock gone squid only on two stocks two stocks as soon as can't in total huge stock there from sakam 16 and now it's up to squid to mitigate the damage that has been done but look at this stringing together those two big hits and now squid up to 63 and off stage again has to shield the neutral beat it has to deal with all these projectiles there though i love the idea of the grounded up b got some armor off the back of it wins the ledge trump battle too but can't really contest off stage but somehow the up b clipping there and getting even more percent onto sockham but now it's sockham's turn they've got ground control They'll opt to back away and go back to that projectile game. This big monkey is being just peppered away by all of these projectiles. Just all of this percent. 122 is a lot of rage, so one strong move should do it. They'll walk off stage, but the mash the out, they don't get the throw off the cargo. That's a huge opportunity missed by Squid. And now Squid, they're kicking themselves with that one. They're like, I should just pull the ticket. Uh, finally, with that up B spinning across the stage sockham was not able to vacate the premises in time and that will mean squid does defend their last two stocks two stocks remain against three from fisher college and all i gotta say is rock sockham put on a very good show oh yeah that for for sure sockham taking five stocks in total in this second set here did not see him in the first set but a solid showing to say the least when you're only having to take nine and you take half of them half of them you got to be feeling pretty good about your performance here and 
They've set, uh, excuse me, they've set up their team for success here in the final uh, round coming up. Three to two, the stock count. It's up to Squid to try and keep SUNY Canton alive as we're waiting to see who will step in for the side of Fisher College to try and clean up set number two if they can. They know what they're up against, though. Squid and two stocks of a Donkey Kong that, well, although the first stock looked rough, they were able to eventually pull the trigger, like you said, on those big heavy moves like the grounded up B to seal the stock away. Yep, and well, I'm looking for more of that. We did see, I mean, talked a lot about uh, Sockham initially, but whew, that was a very clean Donkey Kong. Uh, they did just get caught up by the follies of their character and the fact that once you're forced to press up B, you're as good as dead, and there's blue. Blue is coming in from the main Fisher roster. This is the Titan at the end of the road against Fisher College White. Blue we saw in CECC East. We saw them put in work against their teams and, well, <laughs> this, it could end up being difficult because Blue gets damage. Blue against a Donkey Kong. If you don't blow up Blue before Blue can touch you, Blue will kill you off of one interaction. That is something we saw happen the other day. It could happen again. We, I liked the defense we saw um, from Squid, but I'm not sure. Until I see them interact, I'm not sure if they're going to have the defense they need to pull this out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Blue, known for the Falco, and uh, Squid on the Donkey Kong, and you immediately think, okay, Falco combo character, DK, big uh, hitbox for Falco to exploit. So, like you said, that one interaction could change the, com the complexion of the game right from the get-go. And Blue, a, a, care a player that is known for, you know, being the kind of turning point of sets the way they play the momentum this character can bring to the table it is a tall task for squid ahead of them like climbing route mount rushmore or any type of mountain really uh, <laughs> now, that, now, that, now that i think about it because two stocks to three here dk versus falco and if Squid cannot find a way to take all three. The win is going to Fisher College. Ooh, that's a, I, you know. I, that's, you need to go for it. Yeah. You need that. <laughs> you need those, cheap, those cheeky little stocks. Because if you don't take those opportunities, if you don't put the fear of Squid in Blue, then Blue is just going to do this to you. As Squid is getting right in Blue's face, going for counter hit after counter hit, trade after trade. At these low percents, it goes on well, but one little misinput and a stock is gone. One stock left to take down Blue. Otherwise, Fisher College is walking away with the W. That's so rough because you know exactly what Squid wanted to do there. Just the, the little half charge or so of that neutral B, and then you jump back to stage, but instead the misinput comes through and they just plummet to their demise. So now, last stock here on a Falco who is getting aggressive with the side B trade, and it actually worked out in their favor. Squid goes down off the trade to the up B, and Blue cleans house here in the last set of Fisher College versus SUNY Canton. Beautiful aggression with the specials off the ledge right there, Soy. I love the up the side B off because Falco's side B does spike. So trying to catch them with that. When that didn't work, they were ready with the up B going directly into them. Blue ended up forfeiting their stock, but it didn't matter all too much because as you saw, Squid couldn't make it back, and that will be blue and by extension Fisher College taking this 2-0. A solid 2-0 victory at that and a, a, a huge performance uh, you know you got to give a shout out I think to Sockham 16 for the five stocks they took in this uh, second set again we believe it's their first time being on stream and to come out and put up the performance they had here in the second set and a pivotal turning point very well done and then blue again 
taking care of business at the end of the day and getting them the victory. A a solid performance. I think we're going to toss to a quick break here to possibly get an interview with one of the members of Fisher Mm -hmm. College momentarily. But while we get that ready and set up, we're going to take take that intermission. So we'll be back momentarily. (laughs) I am going to interrupt you right there. We are just going to be cutting right to, we're getting into Rainbow Six as quick as we can. We're skipping the interview. We're a little bit behind. So (laughs) we are actually going to have Rainbow Six hosted by, of course, Corbeck and Suga. So take it away, guys, after this break. Except and ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids. Just kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out and finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big, job that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars is real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live. others rally around inspire soldiers to follow your lead want to forge a better future start with the structures that support tomorrow's missions you believe the best offense is a good defense we've got a great way to prove that theory explore more than 200 careers at goarmy.com Hey man, I just can't find a comfortable headset. I mean, I've tried everything. Literally everything. Easy, my brother. I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. That is comfortable. Are you the one others rally around? Inspire soldiers to follow your lead. Explore more than 200 careers at GoArmy.com. We all got a thing, a thing that gets us out of bed or keeps us out of it. The thing we live to do, that we do for nothing at all. But don't do it for nothing. Take it to where it means everything. Becoming a leader is a choice. So if you want to learn to make big decisions, start with this one. Decide to lead. What sound experience would you like to know? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Wow. Skip entry level. Decide to lead as an army officer. What were you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic. I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. You think knowledge is a powerful weapon? Here, you'll have plenty of ammo. Look to science to solve problems? Wield a microscope to confront global threats. You sometimes dream in code? Become a cyber attacker's worst nightmare. Explore more than 200 careers at GoArmy.com. What do you expect from that first job out of college? Working your way up from the bottom? 
Instead, how does this sound? Starting in a guaranteed leadership position with people who look to you for guidance because you're trained to give it and make important decisions in critical situations. Skip entry level. Decide to lead as an army officer. Becoming a leader is a choice not everyone wants to make. Because all eyes are on you. Calling the shots. Inspiring others to follow. In any environment. At any scale. It's not for everyone. But if you want to learn to make big decisions, start with this one. Decide to lead as an army officer. You think knowledge is a powerful weapon? Here, you'll have plenty of ammo. Explore more than 200 careers at GoArmy.com. Y'all think too small, I got big dreams. You just start I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a saw. Welcome back to Esports U. We do have our Rainbow Six Siege match. Well, it's one of the matches going on. We also have our main channel match going on today. But for this channel, we do have Ohio Northern versus what is this, uh, Trinity University. And uh, seems we do have some technical difficulty on the side of Corbeck as he... There we it's go. just connecting. There you go. But well, I'm Sugar, and this is Corbeck. How are you doing today, Corbeck? Doing fine. Uh, looking forward to watching some collegiate esports here. I uh, don't really know much about these two teams, but uh, doubtless they will provide us with hopefully something interesting to talk about. Yeah, no, for sure. And I mean, we do got some new some maps, not new maps, but we do have some interesting uh, an interesting map pool um, that both of the teams have decided to pick for us one of them being a theme park and the other being chalet and then the last map if we ever do get to it is oregon first we're starting out with theme park we're already going in to that band phase any expectations for theme park because to be honest whenever i've watched anything below t1 i haven't really when i have seen theme park and it's been a very few times i the the bands usually are almost always the same thing yeah, theme park is a bit of an interesting map. There's, uh, you don't see it played very often. It's uh, kind of complicated. A lot of teams will tend, generally, I think, try to trend away from it just because it's so uncommon. But if you are going to go at it, I think these operator bands in particular do make a lot of sense, right? You take your Nook off yeah. the field. She's such a fragger these days with the grenades and the silencer and the everything else. And, of course, you get Flores out of it as well. Should expect the follow on the Mira, and I would imagine a Valkyrie here as well, Sugar, because these are the, you know, like you said, pretty standard stuff, right? Yeah, pretty standard stuff, of course, with the Nox. She's been a must ban for a lot of teams on a lot of different maps. A lot of the bigger maps, at least, like Theme Park, Chalet, Bank, Clubhouse, you name all of them. She will most likely be on the ban list for them. Flores makes a lot of sense on a map that enables the defenders a lot more than they enable the attackers with the power positions that you can play around it. And Flores makes it so much easier to deal with those power positions. Speaking of power positions, Azami is going to be the last one banned, followed by the Mira. And that makes a lot of sense because on with theme park being as big of a map as it is and it encouraging a lot of their lurking plays from nook it also encourages a lot of roam and a lot of extensions and a zombie makes those extensions a hundred times more powerful yeah you know a zombie obviously a very powerful operator i'm not going to discount her impact on the game but the fact that they've taken uh you know valkyries in this and isn't getting used i think is kind of awkward it's one of these things where she's banned so frequently as an operator that i i genuinely think sure that some of these people are not comfortable with playing her right because she's just always gone but if she's on the board like she is right now it really i think does behoove a defending team to take her because she's so 
so valuable. And right now, they've sort of handicapped themselves by not bringing that option out. But from the looks of it, right, they've got a pre canned strategy they're going to go with here. They've got the castle in, which is an interesting choice for sort of restructuring the site a little bit. Uh, and I really like the, the addition to uh, the Wamai and the Jaeger for just double projectile denial utility. Yeah, they're going to put the shield onto Squirrely, who I assume is going to have that shield rest somewhere by Cafe. I didn't get to see where the alibi put her shield at, but nonetheless, those shields, obviously, you do want to have some type of utility played behind them. But so far, Trin going for that office extension, as you see so many teams do on the defensive side of this map, as the first site we are going to go to is Daycare Bunks. Drones going out for Ohio Norton, gonna drone out Cafe side. I assume they're gonna just have one player set up there, maybe even two, just to remove the player in cafeteria hallway as they are getting the hatches at on, on the roof, a player down below for them as well. And it just seems like for Ohio Northern, that maybe the idea here is not really an office execute as you see so many teams do, but taking the yellow stairs control, taking main stairs control, and also looking to make this a three-pronged attack combined with the cafe control too. Yeah, I don't think that's a particularly bad idea, but they kind of done a little bit of a miss play here in the sense that I don't think they quite realized that a castle was in play because the only operator that they have to do with that castle uh, is Watchelm on the Zofia. And in truth, I mean, they've already used one of their impacts, right? So uh, the effectiveness is dramatically reduced in their ability to clear. They don't even have flat pack charges. And you can see, I mean, already they're kind of struggling to get into these defensive positions. A good kill right there early on, and another good one coming down the way from Squirrely. And a 3v5 now with the castle barricades to do it on top of everything is not looking like a particularly good moment here for Ohio Northern. Yeah, they just they just took a lot of time doing a lot of different things, but not really taking care of the real problems around the map so far. And thus, they suffered two kills from it. Early was just for has been below the whole entire time. Probably gonna go for a flank up the main stairs. King can find himself two big picks, but can't find a second as the third is found for Trent. 50 seconds left on the board as it turns into a 1v4 with the Nomad of Otters all by himself. Stuck on the top of main or arcade, whatever you like to call it, but really no way out of this situation. No, I mean, I think the, the inevitable ending here, right, is that Otters maybe gets a kill and gets traded out immediately. Unfortunately, won't even get that. Muma there finishing him off. Well, looking back over it, I mean, you made a very good point, Sugar, about the uh, attempt to come at this from multiple angles. And usually I'm a heavy advocate of the idea. You don't all push one site from the same direction. That's just a, a recipe for disaster. But in this case, I feel like Ohio Northern was almost a little bit too dispersed. They just had too many operators shifting in too many different places to the point yeah. where when the kills started to come in, there wasn't a lot of trade gameplay that could be played off of, right? We saw those early for First two kills, no response whatsoever. Everybody else was kind of stuck in a very Defenders unfavorable position there, heading up towards arcade. And well, we get the end result there of Trine walking away with the W. But Trine seems very comfortable with this lineup here, Sugar. They're running it again as we move on down the throne. Yeah, throne room is one of those sites where no matter how good you do on the attack, there's always still a way in for the defense just because of the way that it's structured. And last time out, um, we saw how um, how badly Ohio Northern struggled to use their utility just because the castle pick probably threw them off as he's not a some he's not really a common pick inside of competitive play. And it's gonna be picked here again, but the same operators are seeming to be chosen by Ohio Northern apart from what the, the, the change of the is going to be the ace is in the thermite instead of the ace. And then in place of the lion last round, we have a Thatcher. So maybe what they're trying to do here is go for a maintenance push as you see them kind of prep for that while also looking to get vertical control. Well, not vertical, well, vertical control because they do have the Sophia with the booster charges. 
Yeah, they've got a lot more options when dealing with the Castle of Utsil, but it's obviously not as critical, right, for their strategy here. You see this immediate push in from ONU to just get positioning uh, and then start breaching. They're going straight for the heart of the throne room, and then they're worrying about setting up the flank. It's a bold strategy, but the downside of doing something this kind of risky is that you don't necessarily take control of the other threats on the map, but here they go anyway, and immediately getting shot here. Good kill coming in right there. Amazing kill as well in the drop down. Not a not the best strategy in the world. The plant is down. It's already a 4v2, and this is apparently paying back, dividends back, back, here back. for Ohio Northern. Yeah, Ohio Northern just walk inside a site from maintenance, go behind the throne, get the entry picks, and there's really nothing that Trend could have done in the positions that they were in. So you have to make the argument that they could have just positioned themselves better to deal with that rush, but they quite literally weren't. Just the lack of presence inside of throne room, nobody behind the throne itself to catch those rushers off guard. And now the last player of life, Martini, stuck in split. Very hard situation to fight himself out of. He does find one pick, gonna go for the knife against the air chat. <laughs> gonna go for the Mossberg pump instead, but it's easily shut down by Watchlin, and that is Ohio to grab a round back. Uh, it's interesting that last round, you know, that I was saying that they spread out so much. This round, very concentrated, right? Everything thrown through one breach, and it did actually seem to work better. I just don't think that Trine was necessarily expecting that, I, and I wouldn't actually yeah. blame them because, I mean, obviously establishing some horizontal attacks, getting the breaches open, that's an important part of the strategy. Usually, though, you do see a little bit more vertical play, right? Like at a higher level, you would see a lot of clashes on the top floor there, trying to set up maybe Defense some murder holes and some abilities to clear out that attackers. point. But uh, just a very straight, aggressive gut punch working out right there. If we do come back to throne room again, Chica, I don't know uh, that Ohio Northern will be able to get away with that a second time. Yeah, no, for sure. And that's, I think Trin could have actually gone back to throne room. Obviously, that round shook them up just a little bit. And so now they're moving into initiation office. And this isn't particularly a bad idea. Again, they're going with the castle pick. They're going with the same lineup that they've been going for for the past three rounds, not really changing anything up. The same people on the same exact operators with the same ideas, the same extensions, obviously, using that mute drone. Since Flores has been the main thing that those mute drones are going to be used for, it's just denying attacker intel and just slowing them down a little bit. And as we saw from Ohio Northern in the very first round, they were slowed down a lot, but not really by mute jammers, just because the castle pick again was like really disruptive. And you combine cat castle with mute, and again, that's just that's a lot of time wasting on the board for the defenders. Yeah, I agree 100%. They're 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 taking time there. Every you know push in, kind of like what we're seeing right now, actually is a very sort of cautious and slow advance, which is obviously demanded of any attacking side. But there will be things in here that are going to make this even harder. Otters with some good intel off the drone right there gets a decent idea of where his opponent is lurking. But yeah, he's got to make a lot of ground up right there. And well, the infamous castle barricades are still very much an issue, but a total of six flat pack charges here to deal with them in addition to Sophia's impact grenades should not be an issue. What is a bigger issue, however, is that Otters dies with all three flashback charges and all three EMP grenades. So the Thatcher not going to be of use any further here. Yeah, I was going down pretty early, and I'm very confused about the push here from Ohio Northern. Usually, teams, there is nothing wrong with having. Yeah, see, that's why I don't like that. There's nothing wrong with having, like, the push coming in through Cafe, coming in through Arcade, but usually, teams, the reason why you push over by inside is just because it's, it's a lot better and a, and a lot more effective than pushing in from Cafe when you don't really have full, full intel on the extensions. And as you can tell, it didn't really look like Ohio Northern had any type of intel because they just rush right into some crossfires they deal with the castle barricades they're using their util but it just doesn't seem like they're using their drones as effectively now we're in a 1v4 situation as Sophia all on her lonesome and all three players were trying well they're already back on site taking the safe road yeah, and a 1v3 now as well a very difficult situation for even the most veteran players 
salvage. Watch Shell going to try and make it work. Certainly can do it on the Zofia. It's not in the realm of impossibility, but the trade the game will be very serious here. The Diffuser getting picked up should give them a pretty good clue of where their opponent is. And watch Shell just taking their sweet time. And I, I will say on the side of trying, they're playing this okay. There's no need for them to come out here and challenge the Zofia if they don't want to. They can say uh, snug in their defensive positions and essentially wait for the attacker to come to them and it looks like that's what's gonna manifest watch down here pre-fires gets a kill on to squirrely okay now we're in 1v2 territory we're cooking a bit takes down a camera has got a potential entry here onto the site of Attackers course still two defenders bomb. left to go that might be a bit of a getaway and i don't know how they're going to challenge that corner good pre-fire coming in right there might have actually got the drop on martini could this be the end watch shell now trying to make a play instead goes for the plant they don't have any choice only a few seconds left Curio's coming forward, has to be quick on the ball, misses it, gets it on the turn. Woo, that got a little bit, I got a little bit close there, Sugar. That could have been bad. Oh my. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, Zofia did a great job of isolating her 1v1s, finding players in really hard positions, and I feel like maybe the mute with the shotgun just uh, uh, just kind of stuck himself between a rock and a hard space by placing himself in such a very hard-to-get-out position, but also a position that's very hard to capitalize off of. And Zofia made a good job of just getting that kill, making it a 1v1, just time ran low, got to the zero second mark, and she had to unfortunately stick that defuse. Now, Attackers the game is in Shrine's hands as they do take the lead, but it's been very close, been very back and forth. We've seen teams in some, or in, a, in, the, in the past three rounds that have been played, we see, we, we've seen both teams have like really good like rounds and then also have some situations where they have like completely dropped the ball but it's not it's not like a it's a match so far by any means no i i think they're kind of slugging back and forth here right and yeah. we'll see if ohio northern can kind of maintain that pattern they're moving uh the defenses over back towards where they started from which of course was a trying victory but ohio northern has had the opportunity to learn from their previous defeat here i think a good indicator of whether this is going to go well or not would be if they spread themselves out a little bit but king sc coming out here on the montane what do you make of that well, I, it'll help them uh, when dealing with the um, extension game here from trying. Of course, the the Monty pick is like really, really good for helping you clear out roamers and putting pressure on players off site because he serves as more of a figurehead and you know you have to make like a, a conscious decision or be able to really play off of like uh, your own type of game since whether or not the Monty is being held by teammates or being guarded by teammates is usually a big scare for defenders who are having to face him and I mean he's also very good at just going into rooms like this and clearing it with his shields and helping really accelerate this attack on time because that's the one thing from Ohio Northern that I, I can I can say I can safely complain about is that in most of their rounds they've been able to run um very low on time apart from the one around in throne room where we're rushing through maintenance. You can see the, the value of the Montaigne kind of being in, illustrated here. He is a, a basically an alternative intelligence gathering operator. You send him forward. He's got the shield so he can't be wounded easily. And he gives you the insights of what he can see as long as you're, you know, obviously communicating. Don't go try and pick that uh, trick up in your unranked games where nobody's saying a word. Uh, but the information that he's providing here, I mean, I think it's of okay value. They are eventually going to have to shift him forward. EMP grenade coming out right there. It does look like Sandwich is oh. down. Good challenge. The machine gets dropped immediately. Kiro's Mars, a whole flurry of violence right there. Otter's the only one who's able to answer, and that just leaves King SC and Watchshelm in play. And, well, King SC isn't much of a fragger, but I guess Watchshelm could step up and do some serious work. Yeah, that attack from Ohio Northern by uh, security side. Just not really, or yeah, security side, and just not really working the way that they would want that to have worked for them with the thermite getting no wall and then nobody really watching the swing there from the castle. Monty just clearing by himself, not really having the backup from his teammate, and Minnie is there to deal with that. Now it's a 1v4 in favor of Trend, but that's a whoa, okay, okay, he just hit that. He's nasty. He hit that shot, now it makes it a 1v3. But still, very tall task ahead of him. As Trent in this situation, again, when they get like a, a good man advantage, they know how to back off. 
they know to not really overdo it, especially if there is one last player alive. But in saying that, there is one player who decides to challenge him. That is Big O Killer. He falls and out. So 1v2 with 15 seconds left. 15 seconds to go. Oh, watch Elm gonna try and finish it off. Doesn't have a lot of time to make the play. The defenders, they just have to get out of dodge. Doesn't even have access what? to the defuser lying on the Five ground there. It's go. a triple kill for Watch Elm. <laughs> Woo! That's a risky maneuver right there by Squirrely at the tail end. Gets the kill, but honestly, uh, not a challenge they needed to take, if we're being honest. They could have just waited yeah. it out. Yeah, I mean, okay. It, it's another 1v3 where we see, like, um, Watchland able to just isolate his one v his 1v1s yet again. And uh, Trin make it very easy for him. That that's that round was a lot was a was a lot easier for him to isolate his one v ones than the previous round was because I, I I initially complimented Trin saying they know when to back off, but in that round they actually didn't back off. You just see everybody spread out any everywhere. Nobody's really holding across as to where the Zofia would actually come from, and they almost throw that round away again. And now we see a timeout coming in. I believe this is from was this Trin. And you know, they want to talk things over. Both rounds got very, very close. So I imagine both teams have things that they want to talk about. But Ohio Northern, I mean, Corbeck, what do you think is going through their mind at the moment? It's a frustrating situation to be in. Uh, realistically, right, if we're going to look at them sugar, and talk about how it's been going, the only person who's really been significantly contributing to these probable victories is uh, Watch Zelm, right? The the rest of the squad not doing too much. I mean, I'll give a bit of credit to King SC there for gathering intel. Uh, but at the end of the day, the, the two rounds have been just Watch Zelm getting frags. They need to change that, obviously. You want to get everybody more involved in the gunplay. You want to establish some trade game which is something that they've yeah. really been missing out on uh it, it's hard right not knowing these teams to offer like sort of pertinent recommendations on like you should do this or you should do that uh but i think the most important thing right now is developing a game plan that gets more people involved in the killing and setting up you know more means of establishing crossfires and establishing trade if they can do that i think they'll be in a lot better situation in these kind of difficult end round moments yeah no and that's and that's one thing that's been like a big issue for ohio order not really having the the support that is needed to be had for one another when it comes to attack because for attack you need to work more together as a team than you, than you really do need uh, for the defense that's not to say teamwork isn't crucial for the defense neither it is but it's not nearly as important as it is for the attack and we haven't seen ohio northern been able to break through in terms of like the first bloods neither it's been trend for the past four rounds that have been played and we really need to see ohio northern not only get on uh, not only have more players get on that kill sheet, but also get themselves established at the beginning of the round because the Monty pick was fine. I feel like it was a it was a good change for them, but then nothing really changed in their play style, even when he was picked. Yeah, I agree. I mean, he just kind of pushed forward a little bit and provided them with information. I mean, that's, I guess, useful. Uh, but yeah. in a lineup where you're already having issues with effective, basically fragging power, taking a gun out of the mix, I don't know that that necessarily uh, helps too much. Looks like one of the members of Trine is having some sort of computer issues, so they're going to restart the whole thing here. King SC also may be taking this opportunity to reset the computer. Uh well, we can't help that, I'm afraid. These things do happen, so we'll we'll hold for a minute here and see if we can get them back in the lobby. And uh, looking uh, something about this map causes problems. Truer words have never been spoken, Squirrely. This map, I think, does uh, cause some significant problems. Uh, we are, by the way, sugar, going back to Armory Throne Room here, which I think is a is an interesting scenario because that was a decisive round win for Ohio Northern last time. So we'll get a good chance to see whether or not Trine is capable of learning lessons from their mistakes in previous rounds. Yeah, it was just the, the mistake of not really being prepared for a rush. Nobody expects a rush from maintenance just behind a throne. And the players who were positioned inside a site, whether it be in throne or armory, just weren't too quick on a trigger. And their reactions to them to the Ohio Northern players running into site seemed a little bit delayed. So I mean, it, that just that that can easily be fixed by positioning players, just being a little bit quicker on the trigger finger, yes, but also um, maybe bringing in 
some new ops that are good at the not at walled at good at um heart breach denial such as a bandit since kaid isn't banned neither as he is so normally banned on other maps um kaid could be picked too we see a player from Trin actually hovering over the bandit and that is mini muma so it, it, that could come in handy and that could also delay time for uh, against ohio northern if they do if they do decide to go for this rush again yeah i think that's a perfectly understandable assessment i mean they obviously were trying to do a little bit of denial there in the form of the mute but got pretty quickly canceled out by those EMP grenades, which uh, is just, you know, the, the danger, I guess, of bringing a Thatcher along as much as people aren't super familiar with him. Uh, I, yeah. I will add to that kind of mixture as well that there is the sort of perennial issue that ever since they changed the gadget, right, and mute, he's not as good of a hard breach denier as he used to be. Um, and I think that there are still some people who are uh, even now still coming around to that acceptance. But it does look like we're uh, going to be taking time here for a full rehost. So, I mean, this inadvertently works out pretty good for these teams. This gives them the opportunity to chit chat and strategize and, and, and maybe come up some, with some pathways forward. Yeah, I mean, you see it all the time in the NAO where teams take a technical timeout and it's it's used as like a little extra tactical timeout. So, you know, it gives Ohio Northern time to talk about their strategies and what they need to do better when it comes to their early round situations and also just time management as well as well as um, their strategies when it comes to the attacks. Um, I don't really think there's anything wrong with the way that they push. I just think that there's something wrong with the areas that they push and also them not really establishing themselves um, at the beginning of each round, because again, it's it's almost always trend. It's it's always been trend actually to get the very first bloods in the past four rounds. So we really need to see Ohio Northern their fraggers. We need to see their fraggers start to get some first bloods for them because something isn't clicking in those early round situations. That's very true. I mean, one of the statistics that is sometimes overlooked, but often in hindsight, uh, frequently opined upon is the ability to get early round kills, right? To be the, the first strike, especially pertinent for attackers to be able to get an early kill, like you're saying, because, you know, the defenders with a man advantage, it just becomes more and more difficult. You start chipping away at them. Obviously, uh, it becomes a little bit easier. It's one less angle that can be covered. It's one less roamer that they can have, whatever that may be. Uh, one thing I think, uh, you know, looking at the other side of the ball, I do think Trine could improve on their post game uh, or their post game is not the right word. Their late game sort of positioning. That's something I've noticed a couple of times. I'm thinking back to the last round that we saw with the Zofia coming in and there's just like a Jaeger lying on the ground in the middle of the hallway. I mean, like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, you know, I, I was giving them a bit, bit of an up. I was like, hey, you know, they're playing this pretty smart. They're hanging back. They're not trying to challenge, which was true. But then the end game positioning right there, no, not, not particularly good. I mean, just a dude lying on the floor is not going to fool anybody. Uh, and it didn't full of Sophia yeah. player at all in that scenario. So something that they're going to want to, I think, improve on just a little bit is how they are handling those end games. I mean, they're obviously incredibly advantageous scenarios, but uh, uh, realistically, a 1v3 should not be reduced to a 1v1 with the amount of time that they had left in that, in that last matchup. Yeah, also, you, you mentioned positionings as well. It's just, yeah, it's also about holding crossfires. We just yeah. saw them again be in situations where the Zofia was forced to take 1v1s against them. And it, it, Zofia having the AR, it's been buffed as a lot of the ARs have been. It's a very strong weapon. And if you take that gun head on, you are probably going to get knocked down. So you really have to have the support of your teammates um, when it comes to those late round situations, which we haven't been seeing from Trey. You know, they're really good at getting opening picks. They're really good at establishing themselves early on and capitalizing off of the own organization that we have seen from Ohio Nation or Ohio University in um, the very beginnings of those rounds, but they're also struggling in the late round situations, which you can't have on the defense, especially when an attack is so long time. And, you know, they didn't, in those last few rounds, it wasn't, they, they did get saved by the clock in that one 1v3 and off his initiation. But that last round was just the, the uh, alibi being in, in an unexpected position and popping her head up when yeah. Sophia least expected it. And you don't really want to win, win rounds in, the, in those situations where you have such a healthy man advantage. No, and you don't want to be putting player, defending players in a situation where they're basically just like reflex checking attackers in such a like difficult scenario as well. I mean, you yeah. know, obviously, 
obviously caught Sophia off guard that time and got the kill, there's, you know, there's a world that exists where that doesn't happen. And, you know, Sophia fires a round off and manages to get a headshot, and then you've just lost the game with two seconds left. So, yeah, I, I think uh, learning to set up the crossfires and playing that a little bit better would really help. And I, I think something that speaks to that a little bit is what we saw last time when we were on Throne Room, which is the stage that we were going back to, uh, where they didn't have a very good position ready to respond to what should have been a very obvious breach that was going to come in. And I don't just mean Mm -hmm. that in the sense that it was obvious because we saw the preparations coming in. I mean that in the sense that it was obvious that a team is always going to try and breach that particular side. Yet, the player upstairs didn't have a very good plan for getting back. It was literally just like drop through the floor. The defenders on the site didn't have very good sight lines to, you know, defend it. It was just, it was very messy. The best that they got out of it was somebody wrapping back through the hall. So that's when I say like, we'll get a good chance now to see if Trine has learned from their previous mistakes, uh, the way in which they set that up. And it kind of applies as well to Ohio Northern because I don't, and I said it at the end of the round and I say it again, I just don't think you can run that like lightning strike breach again. I, I just don't think it'll work. They'll be anticipating it this time. Yeah. You know, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me three times or fool me two times. I can't put the blame on you. Fool me three times. F the peace sign, load the chopper letter in on you. That's a J. Cole song. I really like the lyric. That's probably <laughs> one of my favorite ones. But yeah, like y- you can't get away with that twice in a row. You most definitely can't get away with it three times in a row. You get away with it once, that's fine, that's cool. But you know, Trent is most likely gonna have a plan to deal with that in the very next round. I saw the bandit, they were hovering over it. And of course, Bandit did receive his changes a while a little while back, where you can now stack his bandit charges yes. on top of each other. So it's it's you can you can actively look to um, bandit trick now without um, having to keep on like removing the batteries, replacing them back. It becomes such a big hassle. So, but yeah. Okay, well, it looks like we're having a little bit more difficulty on the uh, technical side than we thought. So as much as you'd like to see Suga and I continuing our podcast episode here on Rainbow Six Siege in this match in particular, we are going to take a quick break. We'll be right back as soon as we get both teams in the lobby for the next part of this exciting ECAC match. Putting that on the Lord, ain't accepting and ignore, just kicking down all the doors, guarantee you boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big, I gotta make it just for my kids, and for their kids, it's kids, that's wealth, years and years, promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did, the odds is real big, job that's real big, say trying a little, my God, is real big, stayed up on the grind on the cars, is real big, I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live. And I promise I'm trying to, before you count me out, homie, let me remind you, they was blocking the shine, now I think it's my time to, careful them dollar signs, like lights, they'll blind you, let me rewind to, back when I was broke and I couldn't acquire two cents, and now I got two rents, they was sleeping on me, homie, must have got too big, call my phone, I'll be like, who this, damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new, smell like can too, I'm fresh forever like canned food, try and tell me what I can't do, I wanna see the world, my vision on Shamu, that mean I got goals that's real big, foes that's real big, yo, off of two little Sorry, my soul is real big. Coming into the ring with blows, that's real big. I gotta do it big. That's the only way I can live. Accept and ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids, just kids. That's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out and finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big, job that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars is real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live. others rally around inspire soldiers to follow your lead want to forge a better future start with the structures that support tomorrow's missions 
you believe the best offense is a good defense. We've got a great way to prove that theory. Explore more than 200 careers at GoArmy.com. Hey, man, I just can't find a comfortable headset. I mean, I've tried everything. Literally everything. Jeez, my brother. I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Oh, that is comfortable. Are you the one others rally around? Inspire soldiers to follow your lead. Explore more than 200 careers at GoArmy.com. We all got a thing. A thing that gets us out of bed or keeps us out of it. The thing we live to do that we do for nothing at all. But don't do it for nothing. Take it to where it means everything. Becoming a leader is a choice. So if you want to learn to make big decisions, start with this one. Decide to lead. What sound experience would you like to know? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On its way, sir. Sounds amazing. The HyperX Cloud 2 wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Wow. Skip entry level. Decide to lead as an army officer. What would you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. You think knowledge is a powerful weapon? Here, you'll have plenty of ammo. Look to science to solve problems? Wield a microscope to confront global threats. You sometimes dream in code? Become a cyber attacker's worst nightmare. Explore more than 200 careers at GoArmy.com. What do you expect from that first job out of college? Working your way up from the bottom? Instead, how does this sound? Starting in a guaranteed leadership position with people who look to you for guidance because you're trained to give it and make important decisions in critical situations. Skip entry level. Decide to lead as an army officer. Becoming a leader is a choice not everyone wants to make. Because all eyes are on you. Calling the shots. Inspiring others to follow in any environment, at any scale. It's not for everyone, but if you want to learn to make big decisions, start with this one. Decide to lead as an army officer. You think knowledge is a powerful weapon? Here, you'll have plenty of ammo. Explore more than 200 careers at GoArmy.com. I think too small, I got big dreams. You just start I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a saw. I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I 
gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids. Just kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out and finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big, job that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cards is real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live. And I promise I'm trying to. Before you count me out, homie, let me remind you. They was blocking the shine. Now I think it's my time to. Capping them dollar signs like lights, they'll blind you. Let me rewind to. Back when I was broke and I couldn't acquire two cents. And now I got two rents. They was sleeping on me, homie, must have got too big. Call my phone, I be like, who this? Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new. Smell like can too. I'm fresh forever like canned food. Try and tell me what I can't do. I wanna see the world, my vision on sham mood. I mean, I got goals that's real big. Foes that's real big. Your offer too little, sorry, my soul is real big. Coming into the ring with blows that's real big. I gotta do it big, that's the only way I can live. Accept and ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, fast for it. It's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids. Just kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out and finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big, job that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars is real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live. others rally around inspire soldiers to follow your lead want to forge a better future start with the structures that support tomorrow's missions you believe the best offense is a good defense we've got a great way to prove that theory explore more than 200 careers at goarmy.com Hey man, I just can't find a comfortable headset. I mean, I've tried everything. Literally everything. Jeez, my brother. I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Oh, that is comfortable. Are you the one others rally around? Inspire soldiers to follow your lead. Explore more than 200 careers at GoArmy.com. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back here to the ECAAC Week 3 of Rainbow Six Siege. I'm Corbeck, alongside me is Sugar, and we are bringing you a match between Northern Ohio University and Trine University. We had to take a quick break there for a technical issue, but it looks like everything is good and back on board. Hopefully, in just a second, we'll be jumping back into our game, which is the theme park, and I believe, Sugar, correct me if I'm wrong, we're about five rounds in? Bang! Right on it! About five rounds and four rounds played, so you know your math's correct. You, you got it, you got it, you got it. I see you, I see you. But yeah, I mean, so far, we you know, we already talked about both of these teams and you know what's been going right for Trin and what's been going wrong for yeah, Ohio Northern. We also kind of poked a little bit at Trin and what they're doing at the end of rounds, it's not really working out for them, and that's been giving Ohio Northern some kind of reach back in rounds where they shouldn't really have a reach in it in the first place. But now we're going into Armory Throne, and well. We talked about it, or at least I did. We talked about the changes coming into this lineup because they haven't really changed their lineup in the past, what, four rounds played? Now we see two new operators in the Echo and Bandit. Yeah, they're uh, definitely making those shifts based on what happened here last time. So the adaptability is there. Uh, the Echo, I think, is a bit of an interesting choice. I'm assuming that maybe is a pick to try and stuff a breach, right? Get the drone in there and use those concussions to hold them back. Still a little bit dis uh, just 
a little bit curious that neither of these teams, well, I guess we've actually, uh, never mind, Trine, has not taken the option of bringing in a Valkyrie yet, who I still feel would be a very effective pick for them uh, in, in helping provide just a ton of information. But you can see already from the setup here that Ohio Northern is not going to engage in the same kind of rush strategy, so they've learned a little bit as well. Looks like we're going for a more stereotypical uh, top entrance and then kind of a, a horizontal clear to add to that as they attempt to set up an opportunity to at least establish one breach. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a good it's a good decision from Ohio Northern. It's the the most obvious decision not to go for the same thing that the, the same the a rush yet again because those type of things just don't work out two times in a row. The bandit though is on the top floor instead of really instead of playing on site as I thought he would have. But it is squirrel to find the first two kills on this top floor extension, taking out King last before falling down to Watchland on the Sophia at the top of arcade. Well, three to four will be where it stands after that brief exchange of violence. They will finally establish a practical breach right there, but maybe, just maybe, it's a little too late. Dim Machine now sweeping it out. They've at least taken one side of the shield out of the equation. Should be a bit of an advantage for them. Sandwich going to be the one to challenge. Won't be able to land a shot, though, as he's firing over the back of the throne. Can't quite find it. It's Markini who's stuck over there, not really in a position to bring those yokais to bear. So just kind of has to hang out and wait and hope that uh, maybe Big A Killer has got a good crossfire. I mean, Mini Moo Moo, who's, who's challenging around that shield. Brave move. A brave move. I mean, he's very low on HP. It just feels like maybe there's no point in just hiding maybe just taking the fall here for his teammates. What I like so far from Trin in this round, or trying, sorry, uh, that, that worked out for them on a roam was the support they had for one another. Of course, Squirrely dies, but Mini Muma faced a lot of trouble on the second floor roam alongside him. And as soon as as he started to get damaged, Squirrely just kicked right into gear, just like how Murkini at the back of Drone is kicking right into gear, finds the kill on the sandwich, making this into a view for him. Trying. The rest of them are still on site. No real um, uh, impact is being felt from the Sophia on the second floor as the Thermite just flashes himself, runs to the other side of barrels. Again, not really a lot is given to a uh, given given to Ohio Northern in this two before. Well, without that lightning fast pacing that we saw in the previous round, it's just been an absolute slog here for Ohio Northern. Now with less than 10 seconds on the clock, they have no choice but to hard force the breach and a really unpleasant situation to be in. Good kill there from Watch Elm, but the crossfire that we were talking about, actually, it, it just rips them apart. So a good setup there for them, Sugar, to bring that down and finish it off easy as you please. And Trine has very much vanquished any demons that they had over that particular site. Yeah, no, Ohio Northern, they, they tried to go for the Jackal play to help them more with the extensions that they've been having difficulties with, especially on the roam from trying. They tried to, you know, in the, in the previous round when they first played on Armory Throne, they didn't really run into any roam game because they didn't really have to. They just rushed right into site for maintenance. But in that round, they tried to deal with the roam. Defenders they tried to get vertical control, but they two players fell to one player, and you don't really like to see that. And on top of that, your jackal is actually the first depth as well. It just doesn't really help you in that situation. Ohio Norton couldn't find the opening pick yet again, and they couldn't really find a way to break into that top floor like they wanted to. Yeah, that's fair. And you see now a four to one difference here. Round number six coming in. Ohio Northern not had a lot of success on this site previously. And there's unfortunately nothing for showing that that's going to be any different. Uh, the defensive setup of Trine looking relatively solid. They continue to run on these castle barricades. Fortunately, uh, Ohio Northern has come around. King SC bringing in the sledge specifically for that purpose. Uh, but the kill differential uh, on their side, these numbers obviously obviously not accurate right now, Shiga, but you do still see last round, the only person who put up any kills was Watch Sound, uh, and that I think is uh, pretty much supporting what we saw earlier. The other members of Ohio Northern were really struggling to get the guns going. Yeah, and now Watchlin is on to the MR. Of course, you still have the GA, and the GA, even though the LMGs did receive some sort of nerf, the GA is still pretty good. It still, it still can hit his shots, so maybe we'll see Watchlin be, to, be able to pull something out of the, you know, the magician's hat here, but at the moment, 
I'm trying I'm struggling to find a way for the Amara to be effective as they do take quick control of Brave Room. They claim that space they're already in. And maybe this can help them clear uh, gather some ground but also clear it. But again, I mean they surrendered that first pick. And it is squirrely to find one of the find oh another God. one. Right, and Sandwich now approaching forward at 3v5 here. Another sort of uh, interrupted attack for Ohio Northern. They just can't get those early kills in the box. Squirrely there, the one who got the initial shot. Sandwich takes a quick look at the alibi, but manages to resist the urge to fire right there. The right thing to do. Otters not in a position where they can support their teammate very much because they have to face an opposite direction. Here comes the initial swing in. Otters will now shift over to the clearance looking on the other side. 2v5, Otters is down. Marquini, the one who secures the kill. Sandwich looking back the opposite direction, and there's the mm. leap around the corner from Big O Killer, and that will be the end there. Try making it look easy here on Theme Park Defense. Yeah, 5-1 is the heifer trend. Hopefully Ohio Norton can uh, salvage some sort of rounds because theme park is 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 heavily defender sided i don't that's not really any secret to the siege community and shouldn't be any secret to those who are watching this game so far 5-1 so i mean pretty bad but you know not too bad at least they get one round on the board ohio northern but they need to find some way to come back here on a defense and first site that we do go to for ohio northern to is going to be can. daycare which isn't a bad first site choice usually you see teams go for armory stone first but both of these teams for their first site is has been daycare very true uh, and you'll see now as they you know take over on the defensive side a lot of pressure here on ohio northern to really make something out of this right one to five is pretty much the nightmare attacking half for any team and a map like theme park obviously very defensively oriented for a lot of reasons but it now behooves you to use that to your advantage Looking at the operator spread that they have picked, I mean, it's a, it's an interesting collection. I think the one that stands out to me and I'm just not entirely sure about is bringing that Warden in. They do obviously get another shield out of the mix here, but there doesn't really seem to be any one particular operator that the Warden helps cancel. Uh, instead, relying very heavily on the Soul Projectile Denial of D Machine. I mean, I guess Sandwich gets a little involved too, but Aruni Gates are not what I I would consider it to be a sustainable form of projectile denial. Yeah, no, it's a mystery not to have, especially with the way that Ohio Northern are looking to run this defense. They're extending over towards office, having um, two shields in play, so I, it's a mystery as to why they're not playing the Wamai to me neither. It, it will really help them uh, spread out their utility just a little bit more. The Wamai disc being perfect for bringing utility alongside the Jaeger ADSs, the Jaeger ADSs being burned out very quickly from trying as you see the Ayano squarely make his way inside. Doesn't find a first pick, but still, I mean, that's not, you know, that's not, that is pretty bad though, I'm not gonna lie to you. I was gonna say something. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Watch down here trying to kind of hold this line and prevent them from coming into these windows. This feels like a bit of an old school style theme park attack. Everybody stacked up on that side of the map trying to push their way in. I actually haven't seen this uh, in quite some time, basically since the map was remade. But you can see the situation developing here for Watchdown getting slowly closed oh. off. He'll still manage to get a quad kill out of the mix. Amazing play right there by the defender, the CX Storm, coming in big. And that might have actually just punched Ohio Northern's ticket to a round win here as the only member of Trine left is Big Okilla stuck up on the roof. Yeah, that's not really the best of plays. It was a good play there from Watchland there to get the four, the 4K of a quad so far is on the ace, unless somebody decides to kill Big O Killer at the end of this round. But just not really good plays there from trying. You know, they burn the Jaeger ADSs. They get rid of that utility that helps protect the um wow uh, uh, the, <laughs> the alibi as he does find the ace at the end of that round. They get rid of this utility on the top of Dragon Stairs, but then after that, you just see players just go in a one by one by one, not really using any extra utility to further stun the alibi who's playing inside of that cash hallway. And it's just Trin not really working together as a team to clear the alibi by who's by herself properly enough. And it's 
Ohio Norton to grab a free round based off of that. Yeah, a very good uh, close out there by the Alibi. Gets that 5K in the ace need to uh, on the back side of that round. Nearly got stolen right there, by the way, from Watchell, but they got it back on the other side, so good for them. And now the site rotation coming in. They're looking downstairs now uh, as they go, I believe, to Armory and Throne Room this time. Uh, and another sort of interesting defensive setup. No projectile denial absolutely none no He's hard breach denial they're not going to bother with that either uh, a lot of traps uh and some area denial mixed into this i think in between the castle and the uh tashanka not sure that i rate this setup very much <laughs> it's it's a weird one uh i've only can assume that this is going to be very aggressive and very roam heavy i feel like that's the most sensible way to use this mixture of operate operators yeah, I mean, you can tell with the way that Ohio and Norton is positioned around the map that this is an extremely he uh, heavy roam or roam heavy setup that they have, especially with the Oryx in the mix playing on, on the top floor and being, being able to rotate through that office hatch into Tellers where you see the Ayana clone go right in and scan out. If Trin or trying to figure out that site is mainly clear apart from the Tachanka, they can just find a way to isolate the Tachanka who's by himself in Throne Get this maintenance wall open, kill him, and then just plant. Because there's no way that Trine are going to be able to um, deny this with the positions that they're in on this top floor. Correct. Yeah, there's no way they can get back there in time. I mean, it's just a simple distance matter. And but despite having a pretty big spread of roamers, it does feel like Trine is making a decent entry push here. Otter's dying almost immediately. They've got the breach in, and this is where the Tachanka does come in handy. Unfortunately, the other members of Ohio Northern are not able to win their individual gun battles. You see them get taken out one by one. That leaves just D-Machine, and he's the only one left. He gets the headshot kill right there and then rotates back to the other side of Armory, but he's basically just counting time until his inevitable doom yeah stuck between a rock and a heart fuse goes down is gonna wait for the the fuser or the person to defuse Ooh. to play well whack him all with them and he does whack him on top of the head big old killer is down and now we are in a 1v3 but he has three more players to find exit his way out of split narrowly dodges the player who is to the right side of the doorway right next to split in in throne room and now he's in the hallway, but again, Trent are playing this perfectly safe, perf perfect, and they find themselves on match point with what seems to be Ohio Norton taking a tactical timeout. And I will just add here, I, I, I think that the the strategy of kind of spreading the operators out running all the traps kind of taking the individual battles i totally get that right as an idea um it makes you know it makes sense that they're going to try and do that i think the inherent problem is that the gun skill for ohio northern has just not been there and yeah. if you're going to run those very individualistic like, like lone wolf cops you have to be able to secure kills right you have to be able to win your ones and i don't think that the majority of the Nor ohio northern raw has necessarily demonstrated their abilities to win their ones against Trine, which is why I think you saw that collapse. They had all the right pieces in place. They even had the right scenario uh, with Tachanka, Shumika's kind of blocking off the doorway that was supposed to give time for the roamers to, to rotate back in. And instead, they just kind of got in gunfights and got absolutely thrashed. And it just doesn't work out. And now you're sitting on match point. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's been the story here for Ohio Northern is not really finding a way to better benefit themselves as a, as a team, as a, as a unit, but rather try and benefit, benefit themselves as individuals. There hasn't been, uh, of course, on their attack, their, their, the main issue was just not finding enough early picks and not, all, and not always being in a really good position to support one another. Every time Trin would like find an opener, Ohio Northern would try and find a trade. And if they did, it would be Trin to find like two kills back with no immediate refrag. So, you know, Hopefully, we see something a little bit more consistent from Ohio Northern when it comes to the uh, when it comes uh, on a team uh, on the teamwork side of things as we do go into Drogue Lab. Not a favorite site choice from the defenders, but Ohio Northern should be on the list.
attackers must locate yeah heading down to the bomb. lab site uh, it's a very interesting choice uh, usually a team is only going to play this if they have a like genuine honest this is the strategy we always use here kind of setup uh otherwise you're just setting yourself up for a very difficult scenario and the fact that they actually don't even seem to really have a defender on the site proper they're literally all positioned off is again sort of got shades of the disaster of armory thrown on it right like they're super spread out but you can see already the attackers have made inroads and yeah. you've got to either collapse on this early or you've got to catch them on the site you don't have a lot of other options here yeah, I mean, for drug lab storage, you don't necessarily want to play on the site because it is like suicide. So an extension from Ohio Northern isn't a real big issue. It's just this isn't a, I don't think this is a good site choice for them because, like you said, they haven't been able to win their ones. And drug lab storage is a site where defenders have to win their ones 110 percent because of the, the attackers will just run all over you. They'll run inside of site. But, you know, speaking of one sandwich is able to win his first one. The next one to Martini. That draw for the board, hard breach not being a necessity, but still a good pick nonetheless. Well, Sandwich is traded right back there by Kyrgios Mars. We'll get him down. Kyrgios Mars pushing hard here. It looks like they've kind of forsaken the idea of the hard breach, at least momentarily. Kyrgios here swinging out along, looking back over towards one of the other rooms to see if he can find any of the defenders poking their heads out. But Ohio Northern <gasps> playing this very cautiously indeed. Watch Shell there jumps out of cover, takes Kyrgios down, and now a 4v3 scenario on the cards here. Make it a 3v3, though, because Squirt quickly evens it right back up just about a minute left on the clock here and these two teams equally matched on match point Taking a look around. Yeah. see Trin uh, take the time to just slow it down a little bit for them they have a minute left to go so you know not too much time but at the same time just good enough for them to be able to take the, slow down the pace just a little bit get a little bit of Intel have some sort of knowledge of what's going on in and around the site. There is still a player on the top floor, and I don't think Trin know about it. So the Aruni could be very useful here, but they need to find a way to support their teammates quick and fast because that Jackal Pin came out. They know that there's only one player on site. And if the castle is going to be down early, that may spell trouble. And there you go. It's a 2v1, but there goes Watchline oh. on the yellow stairs. Can't find a second. And Trent will take Matt in the park. Otters did a good job right there holding him in place, and then it was all down to the fragger of the team. Watch Shelton to get back in there and make some, you know, big plays. Unfortunately, the trade game ultimately what dooms them there. Shelton, the one thing that they have been struggling with so much across the entirety of that theme park map, and it, it is what bites them in the end. Yeah. See it, Watchland takes the leaderboard for a higher Nord and being nine and four on the day, taking that lead, looking good do doing it, but higher Norden lose the map seven to two. And you know, it was it was a consistent, you know, combination of things that we were talking about. Lack of trades, um, lack of opening picks, and also just lack of gun skill for lack of a better word. Yeah. I agree across the board. I mean, these are the good thing here for Northern Ohio is these are things that they now know and hopefully they can take steps to fix. It is, after all, only week three. But before we can start talking about final results, we do have one, at least I should say, one more map to play. It'll be Chalet up next here on ECAC right after this break. We all got a thing, a thing that gets us out of bed or keeps us out of it. The thing we live to do that we do for nothing at all, but don't do it for nothing. Take it to where it means everything. Becoming a leader is a choice. So if you want to learn to make big decisions, start with this one. Decide to lead. What sound experience would you like today? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On his way, sir.
Sounds amazing. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Wow. Skip entry level. Decide to lead as an army officer. What were you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. You think knowledge is a powerful weapon? Here, you'll have plenty of ammo. Look to science to solve problems? Wield a microscope to confront global threats. You sometimes dream in code? Become a cyber attacker's worst nightmare. Explore more than 200 careers at GoArmy.com. What do you expect from that first job out of college? Working your way up from the bottom? Instead, how does this sound? Starting in a guaranteed leadership position with people who look to you for guidance because you're trained to give it and make important decisions in critical situations. Skip entry level. Decide to lead as an army officer. Becoming a leader is a choice not everyone wants to make. Because all eyes are on you. Calling the shots. Inspiring others to follow. In any environment. At any scale. It's not for everyone. But if you want to learn to make big decisions, start with this one. Decide to lead as an army officer. You think knowledge is a powerful weapon? Here, you'll have plenty of ammo. Explore more than 200 careers at GoArmy.com. Y'all think too small, I got big dreams. You just starting, I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a sore. I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore. Just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's got to be real big. I got to make it just for my kids and for their kids. Just kids, that's wealth years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out and finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job, that's real big. Satan trying a little. My God, is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars. is real big. I got to do it big. The only way that I can live. And I promise I'm trying to, before you count me out, homie, let me remind you, they was blocking the shine, now I think it's my time to, cap them dollar signs like lights, they'll blind you, let me rewind to, back when I was broke and I couldn't acquire two cents, and now I got two wrists, they was sleeping on me, homie, must have got too big, call my phone, I be like, who this, damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new, smell like can too, I'm fresh forever like can food, try and tell me what I can't do, I wanna see the world, my vision on Shamu, that mean I got goals, that's real big, foes, that's real big, y'all offer too little, sorry, my soul is real big, coming into the ring with blows, that's real big, I gotta do it big, that's the only way I can live. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the ECAC. Whew, lost myself there. I'm Corbeck alongside me as Sugar. You are watching Northern Ohio University versus Trine University. Trine University taking a pretty comprehensive win over Northern Ohio on our first map of the night, Theme Park. But there's one more map to go. We're looking ahead here to Chalet. And Sugar, what do you think we can expect from this upcoming map? Well, Chalet is just Chalet, you know? When yeah. before the rework, a lot of people did not like this map and it was in need of a makeover. When it got its makeover, a lot of people love this map. You see it a lot in T1. You'll see it a lot in T2. You'll see it a lot in T2 and below. It's a, it's a really good map um, for the attackers. It's, it's a hell for the defenders, simply put. And it it's a map that enables a lot of gunfights. So we'll, we'll be seeing a lot, a lot of fragging power from both of these teams. But as we saw in Theme Park, 
that's where Ohio Northern really, really struggled at. And it'll be interesting to see how um, how that changes here on Shelley because we saw a trend shine in the fragging department, but we really need to see Ohio Northern's guns come online. Yeah, I, I agree. And already starting off in kind of a bit of a strange area, Zero getting banned here early on, not something mm. I think I expected to see. He's not a typical ban choice. In fact, this is the first time I think I've ever actually seen Zero get banned. And I don't know if that's a targeted thing. Maybe Ohio Northern knows something about the way Trine likes to play this map that we don't. Uh, but that's leaving... Uh, some very powerful operators on the attacking side of the board. Obviously, Flores getting dropped. Now, that's far more sensible. The Rateros on this map in particular are very strong. Mira going again, which is uh, reminiscent of the theme park map. And obviously, she's a popular band choice. Might see Valkyrie go here, but Ohio Northern seems to be playing off their own script. So it'll be Wamai who gets taken out. And that actually, that's a more sensible band right there. So I'm going to be honest, because uh, <laughs> Wamai is a key part of a couple of standard defensive setups on this map yeah uh you think uh to bar gaming he's not really good for on-site play but or yeah he actually is for like the pantry but if you really want to have him aid you on in the extension you could set him up with the shield on the top of library stairs in that hallway by uh right by the window on top of the stairs Attackers and he's really good at holding on to those power positions floors is really good at removing those so you know defense was one that wants to have an easier time at holding those positions and what floor is off the board it does make it a little bit easier zero is a mystery to me obviously he has his, his he has his cameras plus the hard breach gadget plus two decent guns but and on a map like chalet those cameras can be invaluable to the attackers but He's most commonly banned on maps like Bank, where it's, it's a big, wide open map and you can make use of a lot of intel. Whereas on Chalet, it's mainly about how you clear the extensions and how you deal with certain power positions around the map. Yeah, very good point about dealing with power positions. Attackers so much of the battle on this map does come down to taking just a select few places. I'm thinking, for example, of the upstairs corridor by library. That's a classic one that gets taken down. But I will be honest, Ohio Northern is showing us, I would not call it a stereotypical defense by any stretch of the word. Some interesting shield placement online here as well. And they actually have three shields in the pocket for this, which is a lot of shielding that they can use to set up a lot of difficult hard points to attack. So that's something that you're going to want to keep an eye on here as you see Trine begin to make their way in. Going Bomb located by attackers. for more of a, of a D, not really a default. You see most of the players coming in through basement as they make their way inside of the site, trying something new and that something new has worked because, well, Squirrely's already in sight. They already are getting trying to get this user down. Echo is going to die, and if Flurry of Kills go out in Trent's favor, the Fuse is down, and now Ohio Northern are forced to scramble. Uh, it's a pattern that we've seen before here where they set up these very disparate uh, defensive positions and then you just see try and kind of punch their way through right to the heart of it. And now they're fighting their way back on. It's a 2v2. D Machine gets one down. Can't pick up the second one though. Watch Shelm trying to play from above. Has to rotate down the stairs to come back into this. Watch Shelm gets caught from a crossfire. Didn't see many Muma here hiding behind the couch. D Machine can't fight their way back in and it will be a win for trying to start things off. Ohio Northern just not capable of mustering the defense they needed right there. Yeah, no, it wasn't. It was a um, unprecedented, like un, um, unexpected. That's the better word. Unexpected push there from trying to coming in from the basement, making their way inside a bar, getting that opener, and then just planting in an uncommon spot as well. Something that Ohio Northern obviously didn't expect and obviously Defender, weren't prepared for. They were prepared to take gunfights on the second floor. They were prepared for Trin to go for a second floor clear. But they didn't. They completely fooled Ohio Northern. They completely played y'all. And now, well, Ohio Northern not really want to, wanting to go for uh, that same site again, going to the basement instead. But also, give I want to give my hats off to Trent for that round because, again, that was such an unexpected push, even from me to just to watch that. And it completely caught Ohio Northern off guard. 
Yeah, it really did catch them off guard. They did not have a particularly good response for something that, it, you know, they themselves had directed towards Trine's side when we were over on Theme Park with their rush of armory. Uh, now going over to the basement, and you've got to realize if you're sitting on the side of Ohio Northern that the disparate defenses are just not going to work. But looking at the setup here, it's another, mm. again, very spread out defense. So this is a site where the, the rush in is almost quintessential, right? Coming through the garage door, a lot of higher level teams have kind of moved away from it because it's so apparent. But Ohio Northern has definitely put themselves in a very dangerous position here by having their defenders so spread out. Yeah, I mean, they also, I, the way that they're positioned as well, they, they have uh, vertical vert holes, vert, vert angles on the um, on the middle and second floor. And so if um, Trine were to go for this, they should be prepared on the vertical angles. You also have some players set up horizontally. So if they do go for this rush, do try and then this this could end badly for them because nitro cells or actually they only have the one nitro cell to mute. Mini Moomon just killed his own teammate. There goes the nitro cell being exploded. There goes the response there from Ohio Northern as two players are well, one player is down, two players are out, and now three players are out for try. Well, it's going well for Northern Ohio or Ohio Northern. It didn't necessarily look like it was going to be that way at first, but they've certainly done a very good job of coalescing here. Now you do have Squirrely playing on that glass, a rather uh, unique choice in a lot of ways, and you get, I guess, the basic idea of what they were trying for here, but realistically there's no way to make that breach of the garage door effective at all, so they'll just have to completely change the way in which they're going to do it. Squarely going all the way over to the back side of the garage entrance here, coming in from a very different angle to push their way on, and a similar play by Mini Muma, who's going to go for a much more direct approach here towards Wine Cellar. So still attempting to maybe uh, play off of one another a bit, but a heck of a mountain left here to climb. You know, it's not really a lot that a Thatcher and a Glass can do in this situation, especially with the uh, with the Glass not having any smokes left. Diffuser in hand, and he could be easily isolated here on the flank if Squirrely's not capable of checking that out. That's such a common position to be flanked from that I, I feel like Squirrely would know. But at the moment, nothing really going through here. He tries to go for a one tap, but nobody's peeking him behind the shield. Ohio Northern are playing this ever so patiently with the Vigil and also the Thunderbird being ready to go on the flank. That just walks right on in and it's two kills actually for trying as they take oversight completely. Still the Fuser in the hands of Squirrely oh, oh. as they somehow make it work. Getting that side control with the hash play being ever so powerful there for Sandwich. Well, the benefit of the hatch play here, too, is that they can definitely hold on to that defuse, but it'll actually be Watch Shell, who comes on the backside and finishes him off. And a good round for Ohio Northern there to cancel out what we saw from Trine. Do keep in mind, though, of course, on our last map of Theme Park, they didn't battle back for a handful of rounds before eventually Trine started to run away with it. So I think that's, a, that's important to keep in mind right there. Hmm. Also, oh, Chalet is quite an attacker side of the map, so maybe even after that, a little bit of a slip up from Triangle, which mainly came from them rushing through Garage and okay, Ohio normally responding perfectly to it, unlike the previous round. Well, maybe they're not going to try it the same thing again. They're going to be a little bit more, well, try and maybe give Ohio Northern just a little bit more respect and um, the from them. Speaking of the next round, we are going to go ahead and go to this kitchen dining site that we see teams commonly play more nowadays along with basement and uh, speaking of common an uncommon site that we don't see as much as office and for very good reasons corbett yeah that, that top floor is just a bit of a death trap and, and people try not to play it as much as they can i've seen some teams take the plunge uh but it's not very popular it's not very easy kitchen theoretically kitchen dining is much more effective the key though is obviously securing this office area uh, as best you can it's a given that you can't hold on to it forever but you really want to make them pay uh, to get this far in and i think that's kind of what ohio northern has set up for here uh they've got some projectile denial they've got the the frost mats as well obviously running to the chachanka remains a pretty interesting choice but 
you know, he, he's got good area denial if you can bring it to bear. It's just getting those Shumikas in place when you need them. Uh, that's the real challenge. Yeah, I mean, you want to really... This is, a, this is a site that depends heavily on, like, long-range gunfights as well. Um, when you think about it. And so having having the Tachanka makes a lot of sense because he can just propel his Shamikas from range. But speaking of just propelling yourself forward, try and propel themselves up in this round. Squirrelly finding the opener. So I, I believe that was Watchland. And they find themselves in a hefty, hefty lead as they look to take control of the second floor. A machine trying to be the initial point of contact right there with the MP5K, but cannot find the kills. Maybe gets one coming up the stairs. He pulled off his target too early. The damage not enough to shut Marquini down. And now this is starting to look very grim here for the members of Ohio Northern. Their perimeter has shrunk. They've still got otters here. They've still got King SC on a really long sight line. But they've got to pick up kills, and there's no guarantee they can do it as the wall is breached open right there. King SC actually falling back as Otters begins to make some peak calls of their own. Gets picked up right there. Somehow Otters secures a kill by sheer blind fire alone as King SC continues to rotate along the top floor. Now in the master bedroom, trying to play out the vertical. He's Ooh. lost his teammate, and he loses his life. It's Big O Killer who finishes him off. Yeah. And trying finding the opening picks in the round, taking the map control and just wreaking havoc on this Ohio Northern defense as they take, well, they put themselves up to 2 1. Now, we see Ohio Northern, they're going to go back to that same site. It looks like they're trying the same strategy. And I mean, it was just a case of them not really winning their gunfights on that top floor and just crumbling a little bit too quickly, not really having yeah, the opportunity to, to waste as much time as they would have wanted. But, you know, that can all be fixed. With some uh, with some minor adjustments here. Or there, so. Well, attackers have located moving on to round number four. Shrine has picked up two here on the attack. Ohio Northern though has made a fight out of it to be sure. Will they actually be able to sweep another one out here? We go back to kitchen dining, and this did not go so well the first time around. Not a huge adaptation in the lineup here for Ohio North. Pretty much sticking to the standard stuff that they have run. Uh, and that in and of itself might cause some issues. The addition of the castle here, I mean, they're, they're barricading off some parts of the map, certainly that will cause problems for trying. But at the same point in time, you have essentially forfeited control or defense of an area like library, balcony. Those just aren't options for you anymore. Bringing replicator online. Mm. Now we see Ayana Clone goes in to the living room trying to get some intel they want to get this dining room all open pretty quickly, but also they probably want to get office wall open pretty quickly as well, just to have some line of sights to work with on the top floor room that we see. We also see otters. Or not sorry, otters. I got confused by the site there. Borchlin on the flank from main stairs, but Otter is getting very aggressive on the dining room door, gets punished for it, and that's such a chunk off the board early. Well, unfortunately, they tried to challenge right there. Otter's just got eaten alive in the gunfight, got a couple of hits in, but nothing. Uh, that would really make up for his loss. D-Machine now playing that vertical hatch down from the top of Library Corridor, uh, struggling to hold this defensive position, and it's looking increasingly more uncomfortable. Big O Color buying a couple of rounds down the hallway there towards the defender, but uh, nothing really can stick. Getting droned out here as well, so continuing to make D-Machine's position less and less viable as we go, and every time he peeks, bullets come flying his way you've got a feel right there the nitro cell coming out will get absolutely nothing he will go in for the pickup but unfortunately big o killer is going to take down watch shell right there and that really makes the situation bad for the machine who dies shortly thereafter yeah i see ohio and northern trying to do too much on this on this defense so far they're getting a little bit too aggressive giving up bodies early and it leaves these it, it leaves the last two players in the defense without any real support but maybe they can find a way back in there's two players on low hp big o killer and uh curios who does have one ex exothermic charge to use so that he can open up the dining wall if he so pleases but they're not 
going to go for it. The mute being such a big disturbance for them because they don't have top four control. They don't have control of those vertical angles at the moment. And so they can't get rid, rid of the mute jammers on the wall. Sandwich finds another that's just trying, forcing themselves into, not crossfires, but forcing themselves into 1v1s as they don't really take it to support each other. But speaking of 1v1s, Mini Muma, my lord, clutches up a 1v2 as he takes his 1v1s. Well, that's a unfortunate ending right there for Ohio Northern. Again, the struggles on the defensive side just continue over from Theme Park. They're going back to Wine Cellar now. I mean, this did sort of work out in their favor last time, despite a bit of a uh, harebrained defensive setup. Pretty much running the same thing going into this. So they've got, uh, well, actually some changes. Thunderbird making an appearance. Vigil in Attack here as well. Another roaming bomb. operator. And still adhering to the idea of bringing the Warden along long which perhaps if you expect them to use a glass again maybe makes a little bit of sense just because that involves smokes but otherwise i i fail sugar to see the utility of the warden here i i can kind of see it I, i've been trying have been uh they used smokes um the last time that ohio northern played at this site and so they want to use the board in order to see beyond those smokes. And also, um, sometimes Shrine will use their flashes as well. And they're going, going for the smoke play again because the glass is coming out. So Five the warden is going to be go. looking to counter that play by using his own utility in that Attackers sense. So I understand it. I, I kind of get it to some extent. Um, do I like the warden pick? Well, I don't like him without a nitro, so I'll tell you that. Yeah, I, I think the I think that's fair. <laughs> uh, it's just a it's it's a little awkward. He, I mean, he, the the shields provide obviously utility, and in this lineup where you have no other shield, perhaps it's a necessity. Uh, but I don't necessarily know that he's the the shield operator, the shield bearer that you want to have in this particular scenario. That said, they are running the glass, which means that smokes are very much in the picture. Mark Heaney here actually setting up that potential kind of hold position here for a glass if they want one. Mark Heaney then actually playing off the breach with the window in frame so they can get a decent idea of what might be waiting for them on the other side. And I will give credit to the members of Ohio Northern. This is one of their most sensible uses of shield operators they can muster. There's Watchell who strikes and then Squirrely who strikes back on the other side. And all that discussion of Warden for nothing. He's down very early as the plan comes in. Plant comes in a 4 before Marquini's down. So Plant is actually off as we see Ohio Northern make great use of the vertical control that they're given, but all it took was a player rotating to that window that Squirrelly was at to take care of the vertical angles, and that only took two players dying, two players be taken out by Watchlin for them to actually be able to do that. Then he finds another, but Glass is still being flanked, doesn't look behind him until it's too late, doesn't have his gun up, and now it is Mini Muma in the 1v3. Well, that will be, I think, perhaps the end of the round here. Mini Muma has been a killer to be sure, but I don't think he can win a three-person duel with verticality as part of the equation. Got some soft pings in here as well, which will certainly help. He does manage to get D-Machine down. The odds now increasing that he could be able to pull this off. I say that, and I didn't realize that Sandwich is down as well, so it potentially turns into a 1v1 here with 48 seconds left on the clock. Well, that's a lot of time to work with. Hanging around the corner is Otters. Moxburg in hand, tries to swing it, won't find it. Mini Muma continuing to chase across. Look the other what? direction, but no! Loses him in the destroyed wall, and the shotgun blast will put the attacker down. Yeah, I'm in shock. Usually, a Mossberg from that range is a, a hit or miss, and I'm surprised that he took that gunfight with such confidence and was still able to win it out, because initially, I thought Sandwich, not Sandwich, sorry, I thought that Thatcher was in a very good position to be able to to capitalize off of that, I thought he was in a very good position to be able to to actually kill him, to confirm it. And he wasn't. It was just, it, he was. He was actually. And he just, Defenders, you know, again, Mossberg is 50-50. And it just so happened that that 50 was the one that damned Ohio, not Ohio Norton, but trying in that round as Ohio Norton, well, they get a second. But I mean, that, that the basement defenses have been working out pretty well for them. Try and go for the same attack over and over again, and Ohio Northern have a perfect response to it. 
There was definitely a bold 1v1 to end that entire match. Like, let's be yeah. honest, it, it wasn't a it wasn't a situation that we see that often. And I do think that one little shred of wall there that was sort of blocking line of sight probably was the deliverance of the defender because it just messed up target acquisition. But regardless, Ohio Northern pulls out another one here and stands on the cusp of at least turning their defensive half into a 3-3, which for a map like Chalet isn't a bad look. Troyan, I think, still has the advantage here. They just really need to drive that home this round, push it into a 4v2, and then they can walk away uh, in their defensive half. Squirrely starting it off with the scout from the Gemini, getting him a good idea of what lies ahead. And if they do intend to clear from this side of Master Bedroom, they will certainly have a long way to go before they're in a point where they can effectively threaten either of Bobson's. Good read there for Mini Moomai, having the drone on the machine for a, a while, but also got to keep in mind that there is a player on that half also. He has to keep droning out that room completely until he's sure that he can go in there safely. Waiting, Also waiting for his teammates on the other side of the map to apply some sort of pressure on to this extension that we see from Ohio Northern as the Echo Drones come out to support the Roamers and the Alibi just running away in the nick of time from the killer's line of sight. Well, still a 5v5 here. Uh, not for much longer, though. Sandwich getting pinged early on. Will be put in the down but not out state. And I'm not sure they'll be able to get much of a res. Oh, they will. That's a risky one, though, because the yeah. position there for the Echo, not particularly good. Dequana going to work right there, opening things up. And it's actually D-Machine who dies next. Squirrely has very good coverage Let from go. this window, looking out at the blue. Throws one grenade over in the general direction, finds nothing. And it's time for another round of Geminis, which gets immediately wasted by Sandwich, who's still holding that long angle over towards the balcony window. Yeah. All it takes is for a little kiss on Sandwich's cheek, and he falls apart. More specifically, it takes one AR bullet from one of these attackers and he falls apart. At the moment, though, Trin have a, a good amount of control, but Ohio, um, Northern are still kind of just hanging around a little bit. Sandwich has finally been dealt with from Marquini in that dining hallway. And now, well, Trin has something to work off of here. They can easily take the half here, four, two, but they're going to take their time yet again and giving Ohio Northern respect that they you you normally would see teams give each other as they continue to drone out they continue to take the time uh, it's left down to the 3D4 Ohio Northern striking back. Oh. Watchstone trying to turn it around, gets one, but won't find the second. The trade there, though, it's Otters who follows it up. 13 seconds left on the clock now in a 2v2. Here comes Marquini, swings hard, King SC comes looking. And that just leaves Otters in the fight, won't be able to do it. Marquini getting in there and finishing off. And again, the trade game coming up huge for Ohio Northern. Yeah, I mean, that's something that you can say here for trying that you can't really say a lot for Ohio Northern as that try and have players who when it comes to clutch situations they're able to find a way to actually clutch it you know we've seen Watchland come close so many times but not be able to complete his clutches and then we see players like Mini Muma who's stuck in 1v2s or like uh in that situation uh Marquini who's like in, in just a 1v1 yes but he he still has to hit his shots he still has a he still has a 1vx to clutch and he does it perfectly well and Trin take the half four to two now going to bar gaming as their primary site choice here Well, that's a uh, good site to start off on, probably the site to start off on, though certainly Basement has crept up in the well realms of choices of late, but trying really in the diner driver's seat of this entire round right now, Sugar. Like, if they can go ahead and just put in a win here on their first defensive side, probably Ohio Northern is getting buried under the weight of momentum and won't be able to get back in. But if Ohio Northern can pick this up, I think they actually might be able to at least turn this into a tie uh, for the moment. Of course, some very strong operators left on the board. You're seeing one of them on your screens right there for a moment. It is Azami who has those kunai barricades that are very, very effective uh, and basically just kind of provide shielded hard points on the fly. 
Uh, clearly, Ohio Northern having a uh, challenge cut out for them because Tri knows exactly the kind of setup they want. Activating drone. Yeah. Talked about Zami a little bit on theme park. I think it's prevalent to talk about her in a map like Chalet. It's kind of like she she works similarly on Chalet as she does on on Border, for example, where she does see her ban uh, rate kind of get lifted a little bit too. Extensions are very, very powerful on extensions where the defenders need to deny as much map control as possible. But Ohio Northern, they're gonna be taking that initiative to step right on inside of the map. A minute has gone by, but still, they're making good progress. Well, it, 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 and, it, and, it, and it now this falls onto how like they deal with the extension, they deal with these players, and well, so far, not so good for Ohio Northern. They give up that first pick due to a long and from squirrely from library. Or be five in favor of the defenders, and that's the kind of start that you don't want to see. Out comes yet another kunai right there. It exists for the briefest of moments before another one has to be thrown to make something happen. Mini Moom getting thrown out right there. Still has the shield intact, though, so there's nothing wrong with the defensive position. In fact, the defensive position at the top of the library stairs is just pretty much inviolate at this stage. I'm not sure how they're going to be able to get around it, even in the slightest. Maybe move on now, shifting position ever so slightly as Kyrios Mars takes that DMR and goes for a long sightline push. Kyrios Mars now switching back over to the remote camera to give themselves a little bit of a looky-loo at what they might experience. Less than a minute left on the clock now for Ohio Northern, and that starts to make them force this. Watch Shelm does actually get a kill, but it does feel like too little too late. No way, Watch Shelm gets another one. Clips Kyrios Mars wings right there. Watch Shelm challenging onto the shield, picks up a triple kill. Very good play from the Zofia. You see the, the push there adjusting from Ohio Norton, a player coming in through the main window of library and just giving them the pressure that Ohio Norton desperately needed, but well, they have to deal with the players inside before we can think about them winning this round. Watchlin on um, very low HP, doesn't have that withstandability that was taken away from Zofia so long ago, but is able to find a one-for-one -one trade. All Marquini needs to do here is stay alive for six more seconds, missing every shot, but it's a pistol whip from Day Machine at the end of the round. A little bit of BM, but Ohio Northern take it. Good kill there from Ohio Northern to finish it off, and that will push them forward a round, a good, good, important, too, round victory for them. Trine obviously going to be a little bit frustrated that they came out of the gate here on the defense and ran smack dab into a lot of hardship, but I mean, it's still a very close round, all things considered. We're talking about, like you said, a pistol shot at the tail end there, Sugar, to keep Attackers them in. To locate and defuse bombs. Yeah, I mean, it was a good, uh, from uh, Trine's point of view, that was a really good top four hold uh, from them as well. Albeit the pressure from Library came a little bit later than it, it should have. And like, you, again, like Squirrely is able to get a kill because he's standing in the middle of Library with nobody holding Library window from Ohio Northern side because everybody's pushing um, from Piano and uh, Library hallway window instead of pushing the actual window in Library. But, I digress, trying. Gonna go back to the same site yet again. And it seems like they wanna go for the same hole because there was nothing wrong with their hole. It just, at the end of that round, maybe they just stayed, overstayed their welcome on the top floor when they should have backed off, they did it. And Ohio Norton took full advantage. Yeah, lesson to be learned there about overstaying your welcome in these kind of scenarios, right? You don't want to just, you know, you got to know when to cut and run. You got to know when to push. These are just kind of rhythm and flow aspects of the game that uh, you really have to get better with, right, if you're going to be a top-tier team. And it's something that I feel like Trine has done okay with throughout most of this match, but uh, they definitely are struggling just a little bit here. Otters come swinging in, kind of bull rushing into the solarium right there. Will manage to meet up, though, with Sandwich on the other side. Flash grenade going in, the Lion King coming out almost simultaneously. Good kill right there, but of course the trade in position. Mini Muma here finishing off Otters and Again, the trade game continues to be incredibly advantageous for the members of Trine. 
now Ohio Northern really starting to apply the pressure towards the library hallway. And this is one of the decisive choke points of the map. It's going to be an absolute bear for them to get Kyrios Mars out of this, especially with that DMR in hand. Yeah, keep in mind also, he's playing behind a show in three ADSs. So what utility does Ohio Northern have to do with these ADSs? What are contestants? Yes, but also... Four, well, now three frag grenades, as one of them is throwing a bike. And again, you still have three ADSs that you need to deal with. And of course, you don't want to waste all of your nades on this one ADS. So it's going to be a chore to really remove Kyrios out of this position on the top of library stairs. The drones do come out. They already know he's in this position. They know he's playing behind the shield. He has no reason to move. Because, again, the shield stays up, those 88s stay up, and it's just a recipe of disaster so far for Ohio Northern. They really have run into a brick wall here. Yeah, this library hallway defense has killed them, and, I mean, this is the entire point of that defense. Now you see a more direct challenge coming in here. Dangerous, though, for Sandwich to be in this position. That's not a good place to take these gunfights. You can see already Kyrios Mars is a pretty good idea of how they need to set up. Could just pop up and secure the kill almost immediately. Nearly goes for a second, but will hold off on it. 2v4 now as the shots are rattling off the shield. Kyrios Mars just continuing to stack up here. Really can't be challenged by any single member of the Ohio Northern squad that's left. They just don't have options in the tank. D-Machine and Workshell are the only ones who are still in it. Got Martini down in the low ground. Mini Muma with a crossfire angle here, and the library hallway still intact. And they're going to go for a full reposition, but they only have about 12 seconds left on the clock to make this work. They start to move in. D Machine absolutely canned right there, and then Watch Shell taken out from the stairs. Good kill for the final, final act. And that, I think, is going to uh, perhaps spell the end here for Try, or for, I should say for Ohio Northern. I just don't know what they have left to play with here as we go into this match points or round to determine whether we're on match point or not. Yeah, that last round just came down to the fact that losing the line early on really screwed them over. And I'm not talking about, like, the EDE scans. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm mainly talking about the flashes. They really needed those flashes to help them burn those ADSs. But, again, they didn't really, Attackers even if they kept the line up, bomb. they didn't really bring a lot of utility to be able to deal with the shield on the top of the library stairs in the library hallway anyways. And he just got screwed up from a crossfire from the top of library stairs and also from the top of mezzanine as well. And they tried to force themselves in the basement up those main stairs but trying they were already prepared for it and like i said before when when after they lost that last round on that same site but there was nothing wrong with their setup it just so happened that they overstayed their welcome on the second floor this time they stayed on the second floor for the whole entirety of the round but they had good reason to because they had a, a really good shield set up in those power positions that i was just talking about so really good stuff there from trying, and now they're going to Office Master Bedroom. And this is a site that I said doesn't get a lot of play, and for obvious reasons. It's just not a good site to play on. It's a very uncomfortable site for defenders. Yeah, I, I think that's a that's a very valid point. There are a lot of kind of ugly sight lines here. The rotations between sites are not particularly good either. You really only have one rotate hole that you can reliably count on, and even then it's usually covered by a gun from somewhere because it's right next to a master bedroom window. The build-up now coming in, you'll actually see it's a handful of operators working their way up from the basement as the Artilla Electro Claw is choosily deployed there by Marquini. Azami on the roam looking for the initial pickup, absolutely wrecked by Watchdown, who uses the drone as bait in a very effective manner indeed. And they've got the drones to play with. They managed to keep a few of them alive here as this push begins to build up. Squirrely dying on the Azami and the... Uh, well, that's a very bad pick to give up because the Azami has those rechar rechargeable Kiba barriers that can be very, very crucial in a lot of time. Even if you're not using them on the extension, if you're using them on site to just block the entrances and force the attackers into another area of the map where you have a lot of crossfires um, being positioned, that can be very damning for the attackers. But now since the zombies off the board, Ohio Northern don't really have a lot um, in the way of a, of a barrier stopping their tracks as they make their way around the map. And it looks like they're gonna do just that. The Kaido was smartly moved out of bathroom and that's a very good decision for him because he could have easily died in that position. Actually, he doesn't move away. 
He, he gets it down. <laughs> He does indeed get the down right there. Sandwich uh, in the down, but not out stage, not dead yet. The members of Trine here holding up. Kyrios Mars will get the finish on Sandwich. Still 4v4 now. As you can see, King SC stepping forward into the breach. There is a defender waiting just around the corner. The gun gives it away. A telltale sign. The pre fire comes in. And the shot must have just clipped King SC because he will not die. Watch Sheldon very low now as Mini Moomop watches the shot. Won't do it a second time. King SC taken down. And that leaves it at a 3v3. But in realistic terms, it is a 2 versus 3 because one of the members. Well, no, I just as I spoke, Watch Sheldon will get Zofia back up. So it remains a 3v3 with less than 30 seconds left on the clock. Yeah. That flank, though, um. I believe, yeah, for Mini Muma, who still is alive from the bottom of floor. Full HP as well. And there's not any, uh, I'm, I'm gonna assume that there's not any flank moves from trying that are, not trying, from a higher northern that's being watched as Kyrios does die. He's not gonna go downstairs to watch the flank is watching. So it's a crucial 2k in that round. And now the last player alive is Big O Killer. He has a player on the window, upside down, a window repel, player on prone. It's a very good position being played here from Ohio Northern, but it's Watchland and Solarium to deal with them at the end of that round. Well, Trine University so close here to finishing this one off and, and putting it to bed for the night. Uh, but they just can't seem to get the better of Ohio Northern here as they get right on the verge of match point and Ohio Northern takes the round win. And this is a good as opportunity as you're ever going to get if you're sitting on the side of Ohio Northern to potentially push this onwards towards a map three. They're exactly. starting to, to hit a good little streak here. This attacker sighted map really benefiting them in their own attacking phase. Yeah, I mean, also, I mean, in that round as well, I wanted to talk about some things, but now I can't, I can't quite remember what it was. It'll, it'll come to me. It'll come to me at some point. And if it does, I probably will not mention it at all because it'd be pretty awkward to me. But anyways, yeah, it happens kitchen. To the best it happens to the best of us. I, I don't know why I did that. I had I had like a really good thing that I wanted to talk about, and it was uh, it was a point uh, about Ohio Northern. But I'll probably save it for later if it if it just like resurfaces. But kitchen dining is going to be the site choice here for trying. They want to put themselves onto match point, and they want to end it. Um, they want to end the game here, or not here, but they want to be able to have an opportunity to end the game in the very next round. Also, as a reminder, both of these teams have been doing pretty well so far in the um ECAC. They're both two and zero, but you know trying are on track to put themselves at three zero. Yeah, definitely a little bit of a derail right there uh, of their dreams so far, considering that they uh, have been on a relatively decent record, the both of them. But when two 2-0 two teams hit one another, well, unfortunately, somebody does have to lose. So that's how it goes. Sandwich here rolling a drone through, getting some scouting done, trying to give Ohio Northern a good picture of what they can expect here. Uh, and you'll see King SC on the Osa, who's making yet another appearance in this map. Shield in hand, pauses for a second to destroy the camera, and then sort of stacks up to get rid of yet another default cam before the rest of the team members come forward. And once more, the bulletproof blast is out to present a little bit of sniping position and a bit of a scouting position as well. Ooh, first kill is in the favor of Tried. It is squirrely to find the, and that's a very important pick uh, for a lot of different reasons, right? You get this wall open in dining, you want to try and get some sort of plant off, and the Osa Shield provides you the extra bit of coverage, combining that with the um, Sins utility, and, well, you have a very good opportunity to put yourself in a very good position, but Trine is also operating on Trine time as they're running some really decent denial using the Kai trick to fruition and both exothermics have been used and one of them has only gone off to open up this office which they don't have the opportunity to open up dining anymore and that's actually very very huge for trying well indeed about a minute left on the clock now four to five is the number situation ohio northern desperately trying to find some answers but it's not forthcoming good kills across the board here from trying absolute ambush from mini moomah 
And that'll finish it off, trying, closing it out in style with a series of brutal deaths. Ohio Northern on their absolute last legs here, staring down match point. Yeah, it's just, that came off the back of, uh, off, obviously, the early pick that came onto the Osa that really would have screwed them up anyways in the execution where they try, where, where they, um, if they were to try to go for a quick plant behind a dining, uh, the dining table, as a lot of teams usually do. Off for the back of some really good Kaid tricking from the Kaid on the side of Trine, who took out the lax of Thermic for Ohio Norton and essentially forced them to go for the um, top four push, the desperate top four push that they um, that they went for anyways, which only led them to the guns of the players on the top four. In there anyways, and it was just a desperate attempt from Ohio Northern to make something out of essentially nothing because they had nothing in that round to work with and trying did a very good job using their utility to avert that push in to the guns of their players. So we're now going into the basement and this could potentially be the last round between both of these teams here tonight. Yeah, I mean, the, it's just kind of do or, I mean, this is do or die time here for Ohio Northern. This is a must win points they've gone to basements it's a decent site i guess if you're gonna throw all your stuff down on the table here and try and win it out but i mean they've already made moves to secure the garage door there's not much more you can do on this one but then prepare a potential band trick for this and they do have sandwich in the mix here on the attacking side so they will get it open theoretically no trick in place right there oh no he's flirting with it but he can't seem to make it work mini muma over the top goes the nitro cell down no targets he got shot out of midair by the looks of it and a big save right there by one of the members of ohio northern as the fight for the wall continues up pace mini muma doing a great job of just using those bandit charges to prevent the actual thermic going down but it won't be enough the breach is open and now dire straits for trying here to win this one out UI, UI, I literally, I literally looked away for like a second to take a note. Look back, I saw a 4v5. The UI is really like, I can't believe they haven't fixed that. It's been a couple months and it's, it's always been like that. Try and get this main wall open. Now they have the, the glass watching this from behind the shield. But at the moment, try and aren't trying to give any picks away if they don't need to. They know they're waiting. Two nitro cells have also been used. So if um, Ohio Northern were to go for this, uh, for this execute on the main wall, there would be no nitro And so, uh, essentially trying or forced to have to take these gunfights. Squirrely is down and so is the machine that can both teams trade a one for one. But again, well, we'll see how Ohio Northern deal with this as a player is on the top four in dining. That's a bit of a wild play there for Marshall. I'm not too sure about that. He gets knifed and again, Ohio Northern, they find themselves now trailing. Oh, oh no, Sandwich backing up right there gets absolutely clipped by Mini Muma over the top, and that probably is the end of this here. Otter's the only one left. Is on the glass. The challenge potentially coming in from Mini Muma. Mini Muma with 18 kills, by the way, on the round has been playing spectacularly. Goes for the <laughs> res. Mini Muma runs out perfectly timed. And that will be the end there for trying. Yeah, not much you can really do about that. I thought for a second we might be seeing a bait attempt, but alas, it is not to be. Yeah, it was just a beautiful little play there from Minimuma, waiting for the sound cube of the down. And as you guys know, if you play this game on a regular basis, when you pick somebody up, that makes a really big sound. It, does. And it makes a very it does. obvious sound. And mini moon, I was just waiting for it. I would have personally used my teammate as bait there to just like pick him up and say and wait for the swing, but he he didn't, and so he gets punished for it. And it is trend to take the two oh victory. Congratulations to them. But Ohio Northern University, that wasn't necessarily a bad performance, but you could argue that there was just a lot more uh, teamwork to to trend University than there was to Ohio Northern. Yeah, there was. I mean, they were definitely the better team on the night. I don't think that there's anything that we can really say otherwise. Uh, there were moments there where Ohio Northern certainly looked quality. They had some good performances from individual players, uh, but they were just never able to quite hit the level of their opponents. Still, two and one here to start things off. It's not a bad record for them to have. They've got some learning opportunities they can take away from this. I think things that will really benefit them as a team that they can still take a look at. But 
for the moment, we've got to give the victory to Trine. We're going to take a brief back break right here. We'll be back after that with an interview with one of the successful Trine players. So stick around. We'll see you in just a minute. Except and ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids. Just kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big, job that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cars is real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live. others rally around inspire soldiers to follow your lead want to forge a better future start with the structures that support tomorrow's missions you believe the best offense is a good defense we've got a great way to prove that theory explore more than 200 careers at goarmy.com Hey man, I just can't find a comfortable headset. I mean, I've tried everything. Literally everything. Jeez, my brother. I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Oh, that is comfortable. Are you the one others rally around? Inspire soldiers to follow your lead. Explore more than 200 careers at GoArmy.com. We all got a thing, a thing that gets us out of bed or keeps us out of it. The thing we live to do, that we do for nothing at all. But don't do it for nothing. Take it to where it means everything. Becoming a leader is a choice. So if you want to learn to make big decisions, start with this one. Decide to lead. What sound experience would you like to know? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On his way, sir. Sounds amazing. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Wow. Skip entry level. Decide to lead as an army officer. What will you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic. I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head. You think knowledge is a powerful weapon? Here, you'll have plenty of ammo. Look to science to solve problems? Wield a microscope to confront global threats. You sometimes dream in code? Become a cyber attacker's worst nightmare. Explore more than 200 careers at GoArmy.com. What do you expect from that first job out of college? Working your way up from the bottom, 
Instead, how does this sound? Starting in a guaranteed leadership position with people who look to you for guidance because you're trained to give it and make important decisions in critical situations. Skip entry level. Decide to lead as an army officer. Becoming a leader is a choice not everyone wants to make. Because all eyes are on you. Calling the shots. Inspiring others to follow in any environment, at any scale. It's not for everyone, but if you want to learn to make big decisions, start with this one. Decide to lead as an army officer. You think knowledge is a powerful weapon? Here, you'll have plenty of ammo. Explore more than 200 careers at GoArmy.com. Y'all think too small, I got big dreams. You just starting, I'm way ahead at the end scenes. Started reading and dodging all of the quick schemes. Money like your Spotify, boy, I got 10 streams. And I'm still looking for more. My people, they got a sore. I'm putting that on the Lord. Ain't accepting, ignore. Just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's got to be real big. I got to make it just for my kids and for their kids. It's kids, that's wealth years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big. Job, that's real big. Satan trying a little. My God is real big. Stayed up on the grind. On the Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back here to the ECAC. Our winners tonight, Trine University, here with some exciting Rainbow Six Siege gameplay. And we've got one of the victors in the commentary booth with us right now. Welcome aboard, Mini Mooma. Thank you so much uh, for joining us, and congratulations on your win. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad to be here. This is fun. So I know that we've got some questions for you, but I'll let Sugar take the lead here. Uh, they got some things they want to ask, so fire away. Well, um, you know, congratulations on the win first off, but also first question I wanted to ask was about the first map of um, Theme Park. And basically, um, how much got, how much practice do you guys have on that map? And was that a map that you were expecting to play here today against Ohio? Uh, we really don't have that much practice on Theme Park at all. We, uh, since it just got added to the map pool recently, we like, yeah. we just scrimmed it this year. We've only scrimmed it maybe like twice and had one game on it where we won, but uh we don't have a whole lot of experience it just clicked really well for the team uh squirrely did really good that map too yeah he got like a lot of opening picks and that was another thing that i wanted to talk to you guys about that was one thing that i noticed for like the first four to five rounds i believe you guys got all of the opening picks how are you working to enable your teammates uh all of you how are you working to enable each other at the beginning of that round especially squirrely because he was on a barn burner on theme park yeah i think uh, Squirrely's just a good player. He he likes to play aggressive sometimes, maybe a little too aggressive. We we mess with him with that, but he's a good player and he'll he'll play out there where people aren't expecting and he'll get that opening pick. Sometimes we'll play together as a team. Like I think one time on Chalet, uh, there was an Osa shield. I impacted it and he was already pre-firing it and we coordinated that for that opening pick. We just uh, playing in duos. We do really well. There was that round on Chalet as well where Squirrely and I almost picked up that W on the round. When it was a 2v5 after uh, smoking off the gar the garage wall. Oh, yeah. I remember that. The glass picks. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> well, I mean, that's all I have for you with Kerwick. Well, uh, you guys now sitting at 3-0. and You've come off a good win here tonight. How do you feel about the rest of your season going forward? Uh, we're feeling good. I mean, we, we've played some hard teams, uh, and we've won our games and other conferences, too. And... We haven't actually. We haven't lost a game yet for uh, this season. We're seven and zero for other leagues too, so nice. we're feeling good. Yeah, right and high. That's great. I, I love to hear yeah. it. Uh, just you know, based on tonight's performance, anybody you feel deserves kind of a shout out. Somebody who maybe did some stuff behind the scenes that we weren't even aware of. Even coaching staff and anybody like that. Uh, Owen, our uh, I think he's big old killer in the game. He's our new player, and he was thrown in this year and he's just thrown in right into the team and he's been picking up the role really well yeah definitely one of your one of your good performance tonight though of course all of you performed very well well thank you so much mini Muma. i have you guys i hope you guys have a nice little celebration i hope you guys keep winning i look forward to seeing what you can do here in the ecac thank you
Well, that will just about do it here for us tonight. Uh, Sugar, any final thoughts you've got before we wrap it up? Um, I mean, no, not really. It's my first cast for ECAC, and I'm excited to get started with some great old collegiate R6 action. And it happens to be alongside you, Corvex. So, I mean, it's pretty nice as well. <laughs> well. That's nice of you to say. It's been a pleasure casting with you, of course. Uh, but that will unfortunately do it for tonight. Uh, if you are interested in seeing more esports action here on the ECAC, there is more in store for you tomorrow night, 8 p.m. EST. It's Valorant here on ECAC. You can see Wake Forest play S U N Y Canton. And that'll be an exciting match that you want to tune into and watch. But for now, for myself, Corvex, from my co-caster here, Shuga, from all of our production staff. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful evening. Cars is real big, I gotta do it big. The only way that I can live. And I promise I'm trying to. Before you count me out, homie, let me remind you. They was blocking the shine. Now I think it's my time to cap them dollar signs like lights, they'll blind you. Let me rewind to back when I was broke and I couldn't acquire two cents. And now I got two rents. They were sleeping on me, homie. Must have got too big. Call my phone, I be like, who this? Damn right, hell yeah, I'm brand new. Smell like can too. I'm fresh forever like can food. Try and tell me what I can't do. I want to see the world, my vision on Shamu. I mean, I got goals that's real big. Foes that's real big. Y'all offer too little, sorry, my soul is real big. Coming into the ring with blows that's real big. I gotta do it big, that's the only way I can live. Accept and ignore, just kicking down all the doors. Guarantee you, boy, if I ask for it, it's gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids. Just kids, that's wealth, years and years. Promise my brother, soon as he out to finish this bid, we finna do it bigger than anybody ever did. The odds is real big, jobs that's real big. Satan trying a little, my God is real big. Stayed up on the grind on the cards is real big. I gotta do it big, the only way that I can live. others rally around inspire soldiers to follow your lead want to forge a better future start with the structures that support tomorrow's missions you believe the best offense is a good defense we've got a great way to prove that theory explore more than 200 careers at goarmy.com Hey man, I just can't find a comfortable headset. I mean, I've tried everything. Literally everything. Jeez, my brother. I got you. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Oh, that is comfortable. Are you the one others rally around? Inspire soldiers to follow your lead. Explore more than 200 careers at GoArmy.com. We all got a thing, a thing that gets us out of bed or keeps us out of it. The thing we live to do that we do for nothing at all. But don't do it for nothing. Take it to where it means everything. Becoming a leader is a choice. So if you want to learn to make big decisions, start with this one. Decide to lead. What sound experience would you like today? I'll have the fantasy pack. Good choice. And could you make it a Cloud 2 wireless? On its way, sir. Sounds amazing. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless.
わあ。Skip entry level. Decide to lead as an army officer. What were you like today? Another Cloud 2 class?